Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, the John Gampy Show. Coming from right here on my YouTube channel, I am, of course, your host, John Campy, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day, to have you, our international friends, gather around as we talk about our favorite things in the world, movies, movie news, TV, and streaming, and all sorts of good stuff. And it is awesome to have you guys joining us here today. Uh, just so you know, on this Monday, and welcome to the beginning of another week, Robert Meyer Burnett is not joining us today. Uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, he saw that there was a new Star Trek uh, trailer that we were going to be talking about, and he said, I'm out! Not, I hate talking about I it. Hate, I'm not going to do it. You know me, John. I don't like ta complaining about Star Trek. He has I no hate opinions complaining on it. about Star Trek. Not a single one. No, actually, Rob is, uh, Rob is moving. Rob mm -hmm. uh, just bought a new house, and uh, they've been moving all week, but today is the last big day of their move, so we asked uh, if he could kind of take the day off, and we, of course, said yes. So you'll see Rob back on the show again tomorrow. But I am not alone. I'm joined. A guy who's, like, just buzzing off of WrestleMania Ray Oris here. Ray, what do you... You, you guys want to know something about Rob? He loves redheads. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever mentioned it before. I don't know if he's ever mentioned it on the show. But I think he likes that. redheads. Never, ever mentioned it before. No. And also, joining us, sitting right beside him, somebody who else I also have it on good authority, loves redheads. Yeah. It's Chris Carr. Chris, how you doing? I'm doing great. WrestleMania Day 1 was very fun. WrestleMania Day 2 was... Was very missed it, by me? Yep. It was a day. There was wrestling, I hear. I'll tell you what. Um, so Anne's, we had Anne's birthday party on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ray kind of hijacked the birthday party by putting on WrestleMania. <gasps> and then like Anne, Anne was upset. She was like, I want to do karaoke now. I was like, yeah, but everybody's watching WrestleMania, honey. So, so we had to delay <gasps> Oh, I didn't know. It wasn't oh. your fault. I think a lot of people oh, were wanting us to put I WrestleMania I want to turn that on. thing off just to no, do karaoke. it wasn't your fault. Um, oh, so man. a lot of people spent half of Ann's birthday party oh. watching WrestleMania. And I'll guess. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. It's awesome to have you here today. And here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to break it up into two parts. In the first half of the show, we're going to talk about some predetermined topics. Then in the second half of the show... We're going to take your live comments and questions. If you'd like to get a live comment or question read on the show, it's easy. You have to be watching live, and only if you're watching this live. Go ahead and use the Super Chat feature in the YouTube chat, and we will read off those questions. Uh, we're about a little more than halfway full already with the Super Chat, so we're going to turn them off in a few minutes. So if you got one to fire in, fire it in quickly. Also, a little bit of housekeeping news, guys. want to keep you guys informed that, don't forget, if you want your daily fix of the John Campy Show, but you can't be in front of a YouTube video, maybe you're commuting, you're at the office, good news, there's an audio-only version of it, simply called the John Campy Show Podcast. Just go and find it on your favorite podcasting app of choice and get the audio version so it's there when you need it. Also, there's two other podcast feeds, guys. You guys know we do the weekly show, Movie Club. Uh, last week we talked about Man of Steel. This week we're talking about Aliens, which I'm super stoked about. But we have a podcast feed for Movie Club. It is simply called Movie Club, a John Campion Show podcast. If you guys would like to uh, go and find it on your favorite podcasting app of choice, subscribe to it today. But also, you guys also know we do Mailbag. And for those of you who are subscribers to our main podcast feed, you may have noticed that we were not putting Mailbag on the main podcast feed anymore. Instead, we've given it its own podcast feed. So if you want to get the podcast version of Mailbag, you can now get it separately on its own Mailbag, a John Campus Show podcast bonus feed. Just once again, go on your favorite podcasting app of choice, search for that, subscribe to it. So once again, it'll be there when you need it. And thank you to everybody who subscribed to that. Also, want to let you guys know, uh, we have launched channel memberships. Big thank you to all of you guys who have already signed up for channel memberships. We had our first uh, town hall meeting with our channel members the other day. We're going to have another one this week. But guys, keep your eyes open. For those of you who are members, keep your eyes open in the community tab for members only. I've got an announcement coming later today. I'm going to put it up in the community tab about something happening at the John Campia show. I'm going to let you guys be the first one to know about it. So keep you guys eyes open for that a little bit later today. All right, guys, with all that down, let's get into some off the tops here, shall we? And our first off the top today is this. You guys know I'm actually a fan of the Star Trek stuff. Uh, I like Discovery. I don't think it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination, like not by any stretch of the imagination. It's not perfect, but I, I've enjoyed the show. I really have enjoyed Picard. Like, I've enjoyed Picard Season 1 a lot. I'm only two episodes into Picard Season 2. I fell okay. behind. 
But I'm really enjoying Picard season two so far, and, and I like this. But man, I'll tell you what. In that one episode, season of Discovery, when the Christopher Pike Enterprise is a part of it, I loved that crew. And once they announced that they were going to be doing a spin-off show of their own, just simply called Star Trek Strange New Worlds, I loved the idea. The first trailer came out. It was really good. The second trailer has come out, and it's awesome. I love the second trailer. Not, I mean, I, I like the first trailer already, but this trailer came out, and I think one of the things that I really loved about this Enterprise crew from Discovery was Anson Mount and the personality he brings to it. Of course, Rebecca Stamos, or sorry, Rebecca Romaine now. I still want to call Rebecca Romaine Stamos, but anyway, Rebecca Romaine was great in it. I really like the guy they've got playing Spock. I think he's been a great fit for it. But it's been Anson Mount for me. And this trailer just gives all that personality, that charm that he brought with it, but also that calming authority figure he kind of is at the same time. Like that spot in the trailer, Chris, when he turns to her and goes, I love this job. I mean, like, it's kind of capturing that awe and wonder of what shows like Star Trek should kind of capture. Now, again, I don't know if this show is going to be terrible. It might be, but... I do know I'm looking forward to it. I think the marketing's been really good. You had a chance to see this. What yes. do you think about the trailer, and where's your expectation level for this show like right now? This trailer is, show is so freaking charming. Like He is so great as Pike. I'm like, you really, really enjoyed him on Discovery, and I'm so excited to see more of this crew in particular. I think they're going to have so much fun. I love the concept of this show, too. I think it is getting back to... Uh, it, in the words of Robert Byronette, a lot of what he loves about Star Trek. So I'm excited to see him won over by a property. Finally, I'm going to I'm waiting to see what he has to say about this, because what could you say that's bad? This looks fantastic. Everyone looks like they're having so much fun. And I love this kind of devil may care attitude that you see Pike exhibiting, that he's just kind of flying by the seat of his pants and he just wants to see where adventure takes him. That's the kind of Star Trek I want to watch. And the whole notion, too, of them getting back to that whole idea about we're, we're going out to explore. Yeah. You know, that was the original, you know, five-year mission of the Enterprise. We're going to go out to explore. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that. Now, I know Ray had some <laughs> very pointy observations about the incredible action scenes. What was it you were saying before the show started? I just said that that had to be the slowest spaceship <laughs> gunfight I've ever seen ever. It was like... <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe not super action packed. <laughs> I, I'm telling you though, it, it looks good. It looks very cinematic. I like the way it look looks like all the effects look great. It's just that last battle looked Ooh. like anyone could evade any of those shots. <laughs> I really want them to hit you up for the sound effects for this show. I, I think that's I think Ben Burt's got Pew. nothing. Right? Yeah. Pew. <laughs> anyway, guys. Question is for you. Did you have a chance to see this new trailer for Star Trek Strange New Worlds? I actually think it looks great. I'm very, very excited about the show. What did you guys think? Do you have any enthusiasm for it? Maybe you didn't like Discovery Picard and therefore you're not excited about this. Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, guys. With that down, let's do one more off the top, shall we? And that is this. Another trailer has come out this morning, and it is for the, the popular TV series that's now getting a major motion picture look, Bob's Burgers. Now, I am not a big Bob's Burgers viewer. Ray is. Ray is a huge Bob's Burgers fan. And so I've been at least curious about this movie just because I've been curious to see what his response would be. And I, I get excited when friends of mine have things that they're excited about coming out in theaters. So, stoked about that. But then the first trailer came out. <laughs> it was bad. It was like trying to be an Arby's commercial and not <laughs> succeeding. I mean, the opening for it was kind of interesting because that was the one that, you're right, it starts with live action. It looks like a fast food commercial. Yeah. It was like, a great oh, opening. Yeah, yeah, the burger. It, it was a great opening. And then, but then as somebody who doesn't watch Bob's Burgers. Exactly. I watched that trailer and went, why am I supposed to watch this? There's, I, I don't know anything about this movie. I have no idea what this is about. And I don't know if every single clip in the trail, that first trailer was an inside joke, but nothing in that first trailer made me laugh. And I know you weren't a big fan of the first trailer either. 
Because because I want them to market it for people who don't watch it. I think they're really just banking on people who are fans of the show. Because I get every scene from both trailers, even this new one. It's just that anybody outside of this Bob's Burger circle will just be confused. I mean, what's mm -hmm. what's to get them into the seats? Like, there's nothing there. I, I don't know what, what they're doing with the marketing. Um, I'm going to see it, obviously, because I get everything, everything that's shown. But I don't know about people like you john or well, i mean else. yeah so like for for people like me the first trailer was a big miss yeah. so now the second trailer has come out the second trailer and i'm like okay okay now we're gonna get it and <laughs> and i will say this it's a little bit better but not much better now at least in the beginning you kind of they set the stage okay here's kind of what the the movie's going to be about because we see I'm assuming his name is Bob. Yeah. We see Bob and his wife sitting down with their bags. Like, you got. It's a good age, John Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what is. Okay, that was pretty funny. By the way, Bob's Burgers, the same guy who does the lead voice of that, does the lead voice of one of my favorite all time animated shows, Archer. 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 Oh, God, I love Archer so much. H. John Benjamin is the goat. He's incredible. Have you ever seen them where they where they have Archer meet Bob? Yeah. And they just talk with the exact same voice. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. I got to see that. It's episode. really funny. It's really good. <laughs> but so at least it starts with saying, you got seven days to pay off your, I don't know if it was the mortgage or lease or whatever. Okay. So Bob's Burgers is in trouble. I, okay, a little bit. Now show me more. But they didn't. But here's the thing, John. Every episode, they are they're always in trouble of making yeah, rent. Yeah, Mr. Fishmonger's yeah. always like your rent is late, Bob. So that's not like a new plot. It's so but, I didn't know that. But okay. I didn't but know may, that. But maybe now it's serious. Yeah, now, maybe now really maybe now Fishmonger's like, I'm done with you. So I'm watching this trail. I was like, okay, this is a good start. They're telling us what the story's about. But then it went right back to just being a random montage of various out of context clips from the movie, and none of them are funny. I'm like maybe if I knew the okay. show, some of it would be funny. But I did, but since I don't know the show, I'm like I'm waiting for something in it to be funny, and I'm like none of this is funny, and I still don't see why. Like right now, the studio's not done anything to say you need to come see this movie, and here's why. They just haven't done it. I, I feel like it's just been hey, if you like Bob's Burgers, we got a Bob's Burgers movie, yep. and that's all they're relying on. I don't know, Ray. What do you think about the second trailer? Um, I I thought it was. It, better than the first one, like you said, but you know, this, uh, I, it's just annoying that, um, I, I think they expect people to get it, but people aren't, won't understand it if they don't watch the show. Um, as far as the movie is concerned, I'm hoping it has like some sort of, um, will change the actual TV show in some way or like whatever happens in the movie. I hope it actually affects the TV show. Like not just like a one-off or, Everything happens and then they go back to normal because um, they have new episodes every Sunday or they've been having new episodes. So I'm hoping at least they'll do that for me as a fan. But there's nothing in this trailer that I, I would see would get anyone excited who doesn't know Bob's Burgers. Yeah. And you are a big fan. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a way big fan. Like I watch it. I, rec I record it and I, I make sure to watch it every Sunday. So I remember when Ann was still working with Hasbro. Um, it was a big, big, exciting day for Ray when Ann came home one day and, and let Ray know. It's like, oh, yeah, moving on to our floor, Bob's Burgers. They're moving their production onto our floor at our building. And so Ray was like, what? I gotta come, gotta come see awesome. this. I know, Chris, you saw the first trailer. Mm -hmm. You've now seen the second trailer. Are you a Bob's Burgers viewer? I am. And, okay, you are. So as a Bob's Burgers viewer, what do you think of this second trailer? Mm -hmm. And do you think it's going to appeal to other people like me who maybe don't know Bob's Burgers? I do think this is a better trailer. I do, because we do have that setup of there are some stakes, right? And it's Mr. Fish Odor, excuse me. I call him Fishmonger. <laughs> I want to go grocery shopping, apparently. Um, so like Ray was saying, though, I want that to be... A, a steak that has some legs. I don't want it to be another, oh, well, we didn't pay the rent this time. Do, 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 do. I want there to be some consequences to what happens. I want this, because it is a uh, venture into a cinematic world, I want it to be a big explosion that has consequences for the Belcher family. Um, so I'm really, really hoping that they kind of 
get it together and, <laughs> and give us something that together. gives us a bit more story because I, I love these characters so much and I really would like you to fall in love with them, John, because they're so wonderful. I mean, Teddy is hysterical. Oh, Teddy's the Teddy's best. so wonderful. All of Tina's stuff. Um, Linda is so funny and has some of the best lines in the show. I would really, really like this to be something that welcomes new viewers in and finds a way to bring them on to that Sunday air slot and getting them watching weekly too. Yeah, I agree. There should be some sort of importance to this movie. Otherwise, it'll just be like another cash grab. I was thinking maybe, mm -hmm. what if they don't make the rent and they actually have to move into a new place? Oh, and yeah. And then the show like takes place in a new... They should take the place next door that can never get filled. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so cute. Didn't... Um... Didn't Cartman and his mom just lose their house? Yeah, they live Park? in a hot dog bun. What if Bob's Burgers they moves in into Cartman's dog? old house? You haven't huh? seen it? Shared no. cinematic universe. There we go. All right, guys. Question is for you. Did you guys have a chance to see the new trailer for Bob's Burgers, the movie? Now, I'm not going to lie. I have not been impressed with these trailers, and this one is no different. Even though I think this one was a little bit better of a trailer, still bad. It's not convincing me. What about you? Are the trailers convincing you to go out and see this movie? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Coinbase. Have you found yourself curious about getting involved in cryptocurrency? But if you're like a couple of friends of mine who have been really interested in it, they felt kind of overwhelmed by it, like not even knowing how to get started. Well, that's where Coinbase comes in because they make learning to buy and sell crypto simple. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. And that's why millions of people all over the world in a hundred different countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. So whether you're looking to diversify, just getting started, or searching for a better way to access crypto markets, start today with Coinbase. And for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at Coinbase.com slash campia sign up at coinbase.com slash campia for ten dollars in free bitcoin this offer is for a limited time only so be sure to sign up today that's coinbase.com slash campia and thank you to coinbase for being a sponsor of this episode of the john campia show john campia show make sure you guys go on over and get that ten dollars in free bitcoin all right with that down Let's move into our main topics today, shall we? And how do we select our main topics here in the John Campy Show? It's really simple. You guys come up with our main topics. See, whenever you come across a big topic issue or story that you guys feel we need to cover as a main topic on the show, just go anytime 24-7 over to www.thejohncampyshow.com slash contact. Once you guys get there, you're going to see a form. Fill it out with your topic or question. It's absolutely free. Hit submit, and then maybe, just maybe, you might see your submission featured as a main topic here on the John Campia Show. With that said, Chris, what is our first main topic today? Our first one is coming from Johnny Shalev. Hey, John and crew. Hope you had a great weekend. Well, it seems like Morbius is bringing big surprises. <laughs> big surprises. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, and I know what you guys and gals and other critics think about it. But with a near 40 million opening weekend box office and almost 70% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, do you think there is hope for this movie and franchise? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, John. And listen, yeah, look, I went to go see Morbius, and you guys know... I'm super excited. I was super excited for more. I've been excited for Morbius for years. I kept the faith. You did. I believed it was going to be awesome. The trailers looked great. I thought the, the clips they put out were great. I love the cast. Super excited about it. Went to go see it. Not so good. I didn't think terrible. I didn't think terrible. But, but I also didn't think really all that good. Uh, so I was disappointed by it, to be honest. And they made some very, very, very bad decisions. In the movie now you guys can go and watch our review of it that we've got up on the channels to see our full thoughts on that but needless to say wasn't a big fan of the movie a little bit let down and i was curious going into it about how would the box office do are the audience going to get out to go see it with the combination of the the bad things we heard coming out weeks in advance some whispers and rumors and then the critic scores came out 
and they weren't so good and all that kind of stuff. Are people going to be enticed to come out and go see that movie? Is there a hunger to still see it? Because I'm not going to lie to you. I would not have been surprised if they had said this thing opened to $20 million or less. I wasn't predicting that. I'm just saying I wouldn't have been surprised. Well, despite everything that happened, Morbius met its box office expectations as it came in with almost $40 million wow. yeah. in its opening weekend. And as the person who wrote in said, close to 70% audience rating. Now, the numbers are the numbers, but they don't always tell the, the full story. I've been talking to a lot of people like my wife, Anne, who, if you had asked her, did you like it or not like it, she would have said she liked it. She wouldn't have said she loved it, but she would have said she liked it. And I think for a lot of people, they're kind of skewing that way a little bit. It's like, yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, we liked it. And hey, that's all that you can ask for going into a movie. So this makes it a little bit interesting because Morbius has now made $84 million worldwide in its first weekend. Now, clearly not Batman numbers. No. Clearly not Spider-Man numbers. But there was nobody on the face of the planet that was expecting Batman or Spider-Man numbers from Morbius. This is done all right. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Morbius only cost $75 million to make. They made this at a very, very, very low budget. And... They only spent, the number I heard was $26 million in marketing, which gives it a grand total cost of $101 million. That means after you take away one third for movie theaters keep, this movie really only needs to make $150 million to break even. And coming out of the gate with $84 million, I feel pretty comfortable saying, Morbius is actually going to make money. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, yeah, Morbius. Yeah. Morbius. Yeah, I actually nuts. still want to see it. I, I love that for you. It's I'll so go cute. see it with you. I'll go watch it. I mean, with you. like, you like, let me know when you want to go. I'll go see it with you. The audience score is what's pushing me to see it. And half of people saying they like it, and half of people saying that, like, I got to see it myself. I mean, I, 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 now it's, now I'm curious. But I think some of the box office numbers, I think, comes from riding that high off of No Way Home. No doubt. Right? So, no doubt. So, like, uh, there's some people who probably feel they got duped after watching it. <laughs> <laughs> and other people who said, oh, it's all right. But I'm going to have to find out myself. Yeah, it's like, with, again, we're not going to go into details for spoilers, but the end credits happen like, that's not how that happens. That's not how that works. But, I mean, whatever. So, I mean, <laughs> here we are. I was going to ask, is it really that bad, the connection there? It's pretty Was it reaching? Like, reaching, reaching, reaching? Oh, it's yes. pretty oh, bad. Wow. Remember how they spent a movie painstakingly, painstakingly explaining something to you? Throw that out the window. <laughs> yeah, completely throw <laughs> it out it the out window. But, I mean. Sounds like my movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love those movies, baby. That's true. By the way, I got to throw this out there. Saturday Night Live sketch this weekend. They did a music video called Short Ass Movie. I had a bunch of people email me to tell me, I say, the writers of Saturday Night Live watched the John Campion show. <laughs> did you Did you watch it? Yeah, like, I thought it was, it was It was actually a, a pretty pretty good song, to be honest. They they did a video called, basically it's all about how they want their movies short. Hour 25, hour 35, yeah. this whole rap song about it. <laughs> and like they totally watched the John Campion show and totally are fans of Ray Orr. And they made that video just for him. But now that being said, and it is, it's a Ray Orr kind of movie because it's a short film. It's short, so it's right up Ray's alley too. But I would not have expected, being completely honest, mm -hmm. I would personally not have expected that at the end of the day, after I saw it, that this movie was going to break even. But it clearly is at this point. It's going to break. I mean, unless the wheels completely fall off. Like this thing now only needs to make about another $70 million, roughly, give or take to cross that threshold and be a moneymaker. So now the question they ask in uh, in the email that they sent in was, does this bode well for the future of the franchise? Does this mean that we could see a Morbius 2? To which I believe the answer to that is no. Like, I think if this thing does end up making money, which is still hard to believe, but hey, look what can happen when you keep your budgets reasonable. <gasps> You don't have to be a global blockbuster to make money. But anyway, while they are probably going to end up making a little bit of money on this, 
I think they're just going to have to go, phew, and say thank goodness um, and just move on. Make Craven better. Although this, it's not the same filmmakers making Craven. It's a different set of filmmakers. But still, make sure that Craven is better than this. Take the win uh, and move on. So I am going to say right now, my prediction, although I have no insider information, is that no. This Morbius, this thing makes $220 million worldwide. They ain't making a sequel to this. They'll, they're going to take their money, have a big party, be happy, and that's it. Chris... You're seeing the box office results coming in. Yeah. I'm a little bit, granted, pleasantly surprised. I like seeing movies succeed, but still a little bit surprised with this. Are you surprised? And what do you think this means, if anything, for the future of Morbius? I am surprised, obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I've, I've talked mad shit about this movie. And good for you if you enjoyed it. I, Al Johnson, hey, you liked this movie. That's awesome. I'm glad you did. For me... It met all my expectations. I didn't think it was great. And I do think what's surprising about these numbers is it goes to show that good, uh, all press is good press to me. All those things about how this is the worst post credit scene of all time. This is such a bad movie. This has such a low score. People who were waiting in line with Logan and I were talking about, yeah, critics have been just really dogging on this. So I had to just come see it for myself. And it was part <laughs> of kind of the appeal of going to see it was, can it be that bad? Is it that bad? Our theater, we had a collective of people who left pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Because um, we had a lot of hopefuls like you, you know, who were, no, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really great. And then they'd meet up with us afterwards and be like, y'all, that sucked. That <laughs> movie sucked. I was like, I'm sorry, man. Hey, I don't think this means we're getting another Morbius. However, and this might surprise some of you. However, I do think that we've got a few bare bones that we can use to continue to utilize this Morbius character and continue it with Jared Leto. I y'all know he is not one of my favorite actors. I do not share the uh the belief that he is that that great, you know, he's just not one of my guys. And he does a good job in this with what he's given. He gives a very grounded performance. I agree. I actually thought his performance yeah. was one of the stronger parts of the movie. Of, of all the wacky characters Jared Leto has played. Michael Morbius, the living vampire, is the most grounded and realistic character he's played. I got a question for both of you guys. Yes. Which movie do you like more, Uncharted or Morbius? Uncharted. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So, uh, See, because I... I had fun. For me, I put them both kind of in the same category of, I didn't think either were bad. Okay. I didn't think either were particularly good. If I had to go... If You're... You, Go you're, ahead. you're going on an airplane ride. All you right. can only choose one movie. The ride is two hours long. Which one do you pick to watch? Uncharted. Probably Uncharted. Cause, okay. Because at least Tom Holland is having a nice time. Yeah, it looks like oh. he's, he's doing his fun. best. I, I would pro it would be close, but I would probably go Uncharted. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. If I was on that airplane and it was two hours long and I found out the only movie they had was Morbius, I wouldn't be so upset about that. I like, take I'd a nap. Like, I mean, I'd, let's put it this way. I don't think the movie's particularly good, but I, and yet I would watch it again. I think I would watch, and I, I, that's a little bit of a change of pace for me because I didn't say that after I first watched it. Mm -hmm. I, like, I think I pretty much said coming out, well, I don't need to watch that again. But the more I think about it, I'm like, I haven't changed my opinion on the movie, but I think I would watch it again. I'd, I'd play a drinking game to it. I'd, I'd do a nice little it's like, hour 45. Fin finish your drink <laughs> when they explain echolocation. It's like, oh God. <laughs> anyway, guys. Question is for you. It looks like Morbius is, you know, actually making a little bit of money by the end of the day when this thing's done. What do you think about that? Are you surprised by the box office results? What are your thoughts right now? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number two, shall we? Chris, what is our second main topic today? This is from Nick Rojas. Hello there, John. Hope you're having a great day. I was wondering if you have stumbled upon what seems to indicate the Netflix's Daredevil series and Charlie Cox's portrayal is now canon to the MCU. The website has a page dedicated to the Daredevil character we saw in the Netflix series, and it states that the events of No Way Home is a straight continuation of Matt Murdock's story last season in season three. Do you personally think this confirms not only that Netflix's Daredevil is now canon to the MCU, but also means it confirms that other Netflix Marvel shows are canon? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that, in. And one of the big questions that's been running around 
even before Spider-Man No Way Home came out, was is the Daredevil and by extension the other Netflix Marvel shows, are those shows canon to the MCU? Because the MCU has never referenced those shows. They've never, now the shows often reference the MCU, but the MCU never referenced the shows. It was much like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where a lot of people wondered, is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a part of the MCU canon overall? Because they often reference the MCU, but the MCU never referenced Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then, of course, Kevin Feige in recent months has made it pretty damn clear that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not a part of MCU canon. So what, but what about Daredevil? Because... Spider-Man No Way Home comes out and Charlie Cox is there as Daredevil. That just heightened it. To add to the confusion, we also had Kingpin show up, although this is clearly a different Kingpin than we had before. Um, I mean, you know, the Hawaiian shirt wearing, strength levels, all that kind of stuff. I heard he's like post-blip Kingpin. Some, some people said yeah. that it was post-blip Kingpin, but that did the post-blip didn't do that to anybody else, right? Yeah. And then Charlie Cox comes out the other week. We talked about this on the show the other week where Charlie Cox comes out and says, this isn't really the same guy. Like this is a, a reimagined iteration of the character. It's like, okay. So that makes it sound like what I've been believing, not told by anybody, what I've been believing is that, okay, so this is, they've got Charlie Cox's daredevil because everybody loved Charlie Cox's daredevil. But much like Disney put Grand Admiral Thrawn in the Star Wars universe, it's not the same Grand Admiral Thrawn that was in the Heir to the Empire book series. It's very close. It looks a lot alike, but it's a different Grand Admiral Thrawn. Just like this is a Daredevil that it's very, very close. It's almost identical, but it's not the same one. But still, we've never known. But then, this weekend... Marvel's official website on the character bio page of Matt Murdock. They've got a write-up of Matt Murdock's history, and it's all from the Daredevil show. But all of a sudden, a new paragraph appeared on it that looked like it settled the discussion. This is what it said. The final paragraph that they added said this. Sometime later, Matt was hired as an attorney to defend Peter Parker, as Peter had been publicly ousted are outed as Spider-Man and accused of Mysterio's murder. Though Peter was legally cleared of any wrongdoing, Matt warned him he'd still have to face the court of public opinion and advised Harold Happy Hogan to hire a good lawyer. As if on cue, a protester threw a brick through the window of the Parker's apartment in support of Mysterio. Fortunately, due to his heightened senses, Matt was able to catch the brick before it hurt anyone inside. Okay, so here's the key. The first two words, sometime later. So on Marvel's official website, it showed describing Matt Murdock in the MCU, and then it just continued on. Sometime later, Matt went on and did this. So a lot of people, understandably so, and rightfully so, started writing into me and saying, does this settle it? That it is absolute canon with Marvel? Well, no. Because as we have seen happen on StarWars.com, where bios were written and then later changed because the bios weren't accurate or reflective of what canon was, they went in and they were, they quickly removed that paragraph. Uh, as you can see in the update down here, uh, this comes us from CBR. Down there in the update, it says, Update, Marvel has removed the paragraph about Matt Murdock's appearance in Spider-Man No Way Home from his live-action biography detailing his television history. So... What did come out and look like, well, that's definitive. Daredevil is, the show on Netflix is part of MCU canon. It's never been referenced before. It's never been mentioned before. But that one paragraph on Marvel's official website appeared to make it conclusive. Well, that's no longer the case. Apparently, somebody wrote something that was inaccurate or wrong or whatever, and they decided to pull the, the paragraph down as soon as people started talking about it. Now, I want to say this. Them pulling it down, I do not believe definitively says what I have suspected. Because, you know, I suspect that what we're going to find out here is that this is a very similar Daredevil, 
but it is not the identical Daredevil, just as Grand Admiral Thrawn was very similar, but not the same one. That's what I believe they're they're leading towards. But I, I still don't know for sure. I don't believe that them pulling that paragraph down definitively tells us that this is a different Daredevil than the MCU Daredevil. There could be other explanations. It could be that the, the what they wrote was accurate, but they weren't ready to post it yet. Or that maybe what they wrote was accurate, but it's incomplete and they wanted to change something in it. I, 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 all I'm saying is, is that I don't believe that them pulling it down 100% confirms that this is a different Daredevil. It, I mean, it could be. It could be that they went, whoa, 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 that's inaccurate. That's, that's, that's making it sound like this is the same Daredevil and it's not pull it down. That's possible. And that does fall in line with what my theory is, but it does not definitively prove my theory by any stretch of the imagination. We could still find out later on, Kevin Feige may come out and say, hey, just so everybody knows, we're now going to start to acknowledge all the events of the Netflix series. The Netflix series are canon. He could very well do that. I'll be a little bit surprised, but I won't fall out of my chair with shock. So that's still possible. But I'm just going to say for now, if I had to put up $1, I would still say all the evidence I've looked at so far from what Charlie Cox has said, from what Kevin Feige has said, from what we've seen, I still believe this is another situation just like Grand Admiral Thrawn. It looks a lot alike. It looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. It sounds like a duck. But in this particular instance, it's not actually a duck. This isn't the same one from the, the series. But I'm not willing to put $1,000 on that. I could very easily have my mind changed about that. Anyway, Chris, with all the stuff we've seen already, from everything that Charlie Cox said before to this paragraph going up, then the paragraph being removed, First of all, what do you think about the paragraph itself and its removal? And then where does that leave you right now on the whole question of is it or isn't it the exact same Daredevil from the show? I mean, the paragraph going up was, OK, great. We get the Daredevil that we know and love. Excellent. I'm here for it. And then the paragraph being taken down was, "Ooh, there's an intern getting fired today. Yeah. <laughs> Someone is not getting their college credit from the Disney College program. <laughs> Oof. I am not going to believe anything unless it comes from Kevin Feige's mouth directly. Yeah. You know, and, and as much as this is Charlie Cox's character, right, we really have embraced him as Daredevil. And I'm so glad that he is going to continue in this role playing Matt Murdock. But I mean, I don't even believe him when he says this is a different character. I need Kevin Feige to tell me the trajectory, frankly. I need him to say, yep, this is what it is, because he's the mastermind behind it all. He's weaving this Dickensian web of all these characters knowing each other and being connected. And while, you know, this could be that Matt Murdock variant, you know, it's it's a duck variant. I, I'm still holding out hope that this is the Matt Murdock that we've seen before, just because I loved that show so much. I really still want the Foggy we know. I still want the Karen we know. I'm hoping everyone gets pulled back on board. Now, the, of course, the one problem that does present is, of course, if you pull that in, then you're saying everything that happened in the Netflix universe is canon. Exactly. And there are already some things that they've already contradicted in that overall. So it's going to be interesting to see which way they go. And you're right. There's no way we're going to know definitively until Kevin Feige comes yeah. out and says one thing or the other. Right. And once he does good, that'll put it to bed. I think there are definitely some positives if it is the daredevil carrying over. Cause that means the John Bernthal Punisher is still there, yes. which is the one that really excites me. Mm -hmm. I could give or take iron fist. I could give or take Jessica Jones, to be honest, I could give or take, Iron Fist. I like the first half of season one of Iron Fist, mm -hmm. but then to me, it kind of fell apart Just after that. Just focus on Colleen Wing. That's all you need. I, I am all about Colleen Wing. Colleen Although Wing is great. Although she turned down an MCU thing so she could go and do Matrix. Uh, but mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what they're going to be doing with this. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? A paragraph that seemingly put the whole issue to rest was put up and then apparently making a big statement by taking it down. Where do you fall in this whole conversation right now? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. You know what's going to help you have a wonderful week? Making sure you got a finely trimmed nether regions with our friends and Manscaped. <laughs>
Hey guys, we want to take a second and thank a sponsor of today's video, the good folks at Manscaped. You know, I was in the shower the other day and I looked down and I thought, my goodness, the boys look fantastic. Dr. Jack Hammer, the amazing Mr. Fantastical, have never looked or felt better. And that is in part due to our friends at Manscaped. Because our friends at Manscaped are the global leaders in below-the-waist hygiene and are turning men's shower dreams into their favorite routine with the all-new Ultra Premium Collection. This all-in-one hygiene skin and hair bundle is designed to upgrade the everyday man's shower routine from head to toe. Your skin, hair, and balls deserve the best my friends you start off using the cologne infused ultra premium body wash with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean and moisturized all day then boom it's time to take care of your hair simply apply the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner that cleanses and nourishes your hair all in one step then once you dry yourself off and hop out of the shower it's time to protect yourself from body odor by applying the manscaped aluminum free deodorant and do you have tattoos or any dry skin a lot of us do it's time to hit your skin with the Hydrating Body Moisturizer Spray. Cap it all off by applying some Manscaped Lip Balm. And then last but not least, we're moving on to the Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Trimmer to clean off any unwanted body hair. So guys, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Campia, that's C-A-M-P-E-A at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code Campia at manscaped.com. And a special thank you to the good folks at Manscaped for keeping us looking and feeling good and for being a sponsor of this episode of the John Campia Show. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number three. Chris, what is our third main topic today? This comes from Gary Madigan. Hey, John and team. The official runtime of Doctor Strange 2 was revealed to be two hours and six minutes, a bit shorter than I was expecting. The average MCU runtime is 2 hours 11 minutes, which makes this slightly shorter. With all that's expected to happen in this movie, I hope it doesn't feel rushed. Then again, Sam Raimi told the wonderf uh, wonderfully paced Spider-Man 2 in the exact same runtime, so I trust him with this. But what are your thoughts on the runtime, and how do you think this will bode for the story? Thanks. All right, thanks for sending that in, Gary. All right, look, a couple of really interesting things have just come out about Doctor Strange. Number one, of course, as you just mentioned, is the runtime. Uh, two hours, six minutes. A far cry from like the Batman three hours. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but also, we also found out when tickets officially go on sale. A new 30-second spot. Uh, that's mostly the same footage, but a few interesting new things in there. But a new 30-second spot came out, which concluded with tickets go on sale on Wednesday. So tickets will go on sale in two days. They go on sale for Doctor Strange. I will definitely be getting my tickets. However, just a lot of, a lot of people know who've been asking me already. Will there be a ticket watch for Doctor Strange? <laughs> and the answer is no. We will not be doing ticket watch for Doctor Strange. I would, except the only reason I'm not going to is because I'm actually going to be going to a screening of Fantastic Beast 3. And since I will be at a screening of Secrets of Dumbledore, I will not be available to Is do that, a ticket watch. Wait, are you talking about Tuesday night or Wednesday night? When would ticket watch have been? It would have been. It would probably would have been Wednesday evening. Oh, okay. But oh, I mean, see, here's the thing: tickets go on sale on Wednesday, but I have not heard any official right. time yet about yeah. what time they go on sale. I don't know what time. Mm. They, do they go on sale at twelve oh one? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That's if what I was they thinking. did, rarely they rarely do. But if they did, we could still could do. If we find out that tickets go on sale at twelve oh one a.m on Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. We can still do Ticket Watch. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but I don't think that's what they're going to do. So I'm not really sure yet. Some people have been saying it's 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, which I'm not going to do Ticket Watch at 6 a.m. <laughs> my time, no matter what. Although I will probably be up buying my tickets. I was but say. I, I've also heard some contrary inf information to that, saying that it's not 6 a.m., despite the th that's the report going around right now. So honestly, the bottom line is, I don't know. Main question, though, is what we think about the runtime. And I think this is a perfect runtime for a movie like this. But again, here's the thing. There are still movie fans out there who are under two delusional perceptions. Number one, that R makes a movie better. No, it does not. And longer makes a movie better. No, it does not. 
Nor is it true that PG makes a movie better, nor is it true that shorter makes a movie better, unless you ask Ray Ora, yeah. to which he will maybe disagree with me on that. But every movie has a runtime that is perfect for it. And if Sam Raimi believes that two hours and six minutes is the perfect runtime to pack in everything he wants to have in there and give it a good crisp pace, make it feel action-packed, make it feel like at the end of the movie you're ready to take a deep breath and get off the ride at the end. If Sam Raimi thinks two hours and six minutes is the right runtime, then great. Then that's then I'm going to go into this movie believing that two. if it was two hours and 15 minutes, it would have been too long. And if it was an hour and 55 minutes, it would have been too short. If Sam Raimi thinks two hours and six minutes is the right runtime for this movie, then it's the right runtime for the movie. Until I see the movie and think otherwise. So all I know is that we are getting closer now to this movie and I am getting ludicrously excited. Like I've, I've been pumped for it the whole time, but I just find myself as we get closer and closer and closer and it's becoming more and more of a reality. And we are going to be one month away from this movie opening in theaters, man, I'm getting stoked. And every new little teaser and trailer that comes out, I'm eating it up. And now we know when the tickets are coming out and the runtime. So Chris, let me throw this over to you. You hear about the runtime for this thing, two hours, six minutes. What does that tell you? Is that good, bad, indifferent? What are you thinking about this? Oh man, I love that you're already at ludicrous speed. I am. We're gonna completely. be going flat on this one. I'm so excited about this movie. I think this is gonna be so much fun. Uh, this kind of ties into my wedding anniversary and that's literally what Logan and I wanna go do is we were like, we're gonna go see Doctor Strange. It's gonna be great. That's a good anniversary plan I think right it's there. gonna be so fun. It'll be so, so great. He's one of our, our favorite characters. I think the runtime here, I love that we're kind of putting in stock of like, this is the same length as Spider-Man 2. That's what gave us Dr. Ock. That's what gave us a masterpiece. I don't really fall into that camp of he did this with that in mind. I think that just kind of is a really delightful coincidence. That said, I really like Grammy as a storyteller. And I think that he is going to tell a story in as much time as he needs. Um, I think that he is so, so great at showing instead of telling. I think with all the different things we know are going to be in this movie, all these variants, all these multiple timelines, I think he's got a lot to juggle and I'm sure he's handling it with a deft hand or I believe he's handling it with a deft hand. I mean, obviously seeing it is what's going to really, really show what uh, how he did, right? But I, I don't see this as being a movie that's longer than, you know, two and a half hours. Otherwise, it's going to become that member berries thing. It's going to just be needless cameos. It's going to just be a whole bunch of like schmactery things that are just made for fans to go, oh, hey, there's a thing there. I'm hoping that this is just very indicative of telling the story exactly as it needed to be told. I, I love that you brought that up because that's one of the things that I thought about was that two hours and six minutes. That doesn't really tell us what will or won't be in the movie definitively, but it gives me more hope that, because my one worry about this movie was that it'll just be pointless cameos yeah. thrown in all over the place, right? Like, we know Patrick Stewart's going to be in there with Professor Xavier, but I also am 100% confident that that's going to be pivotal to the narrative of the story, Exactly. right? And there could be a temptation there just to have a whole bunch of scenes with just a whole bunch of random cameos because it's the multiverse. Tom Cruise running around. Happen. Yeah, and who who knows? We may see Tom yeah. Cruise running around, but I'm going to trust it if it is this narrative driven. And so that is one of the good things for me. Now, Ray, I can only imagine because I I remember, I still remember when I was talking to you about Batman and it first came up that the movie was going to be three hours. There was a little tear in the side of your uh, eye. Yeah. Like it's like you were a little bit worried about that. But you're here now. This thing is barely over. Probably minus credits is probably less than two hours. How are you feeling about I'm, it? I'm I'm actually quite shocked that it's that short. I, I mean, it feels like the MCU movies have been getting longer yeah, and longer. Our, yeah. our initial reports were there was like a three and a half hour cut. I mean, if, I, I, from what I remember reading, but you know, I I just want to know what they cut out, and also for a movie like this. You say cameos and all that stuff. From what I see in the trailer, I think it's it's the perfect time to be honest. Like, um, if it was any shorter than this, then I would I would question it. But I think uh, there should be enough time for us to learn about the characters that we see in the trailer that we we haven't been introduced to. I guess America America Chavez. I mean, America Chavez is gonna be the main one, yeah. right? Because like, we already know Wanda, we know Mordo. We know Strange. We know Wong. I mean, I think anybody else will probably have momentary roles to play. And we don't probably need to go in depth except for America. I mean, and, that's probably it. And as far as the cameos are concerned, I'm not 
I don't think there's going to be as many as people think there there are going to be. I mean, we did the same thing with No Way Home, right? right. At the end, everyone's (laughs) come, and we didn't get any of the people that we wanted. So this one, I think it's just going to be just some pure craziness. If it's pure craziness for two hours, there's no way in hell I'm sleeping through through craziness. It's got to. I mean, I'm really excited to see all the effects to see where they go because they could go anywhere in this multi multiverse of madness literally anyway, so like yeah. i'm excited to see what they do i mean that that last shot from the last trailer still is, is still in my head of the zombie strange that oh, thing looked yeah. creepy as heck i hope that part is like in the movie like so like at least a, like a good amount of the movie because uh Raimi does some good stuff with horror i think he did the didn't he do drag me to hell yeah I really like that movie. Yeah, so I thought I hope, you did a really good job dragging me to hell. I hope there's a lot of like, or at least a little bit of horror and elements to this movie. And, I, I, and fun. I mean, just Army yeah. of Darkness. He's so good. He's so great. By the way, did you guys see that social media post that Bruce Campbell put out? I'm, I'm going to see if I can find it here for a second. But Bruce Campbell, hold on a second. Uh, Bruce, Ash is coming to the Multiverse of Madness? Um, <laughs> he, he a thousand percent is going to have a cameo in this, I feel. I'm going to see if Ooh, I can Ash? find this yeah. here. Bruce Campbell? Oh, absolutely. But he put out... Where, I'm going to see if I can find it right now. Okay, here it is. I'm going to bring this up. So Bruce Campbell, who of course is a Sam Raimi guy, right? Totally a Sam Raimi guy. He put out this picture. He said... I always feel a little strange when I work in a Sam Raimi movie. And this is what he posted. <gasps> yes. Wait, okay. So, I mean, I mean, look at the hair and the goatee. Now, this, I also want to point out the timestamp on this tweet. Yeah. The timestamp on the tweet is April 1st. So at 9.34 a.m. Oh. So it is very likely He's that that Dr. was Strange. totally a gag, but you can't help but look at this. And because I, does anybody have any doubt that we're at the very minimum going to get a Bruce Campbell appearance? He's going to appear movie? in this movie. He appears in all the Sam stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's he is a Sam Raimi guy. I mean, yeah. it's, it's you got to have him in yeah. there, right? But I don't think he's going to be a Doctor Strange variant. That was a good maneuver right there, posting that on April first. Oh yeah, that was a because you're like, one. what? Wait. <laughs> so that's a good move. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? Number one, tickets are going on sale on Wednesday. I know you guys are going to be getting ready for that. But also, we now have a runtime for the movie. It's two hours, six minutes. I believe that includes the the credits and everything like that. A lot shorter than like what we've been getting lately. But I still think a really solid runtime. We'll find out if it's the right runtime or life. What do you guys feel? Do you still feel it's a little bit too long? Do you think it's too short? Do you think it could be the perfect runtime? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts all right guys with that down let's move on to main topic number four shall we chris what is our fourth main topic today this comes from brian meadows in the words of cj from grand theft auto oh shit here we go again (laughs) the hollywood reporter that uh that another actor bill skarsgård and another director rupert sanders have been attached to the reboot of the crow I still don't think this is happening. What about you guys? Thanks and bring on the filthy. All right. So we have for a long time, a long time, have been hearing that they were going to do another Crow movie. I mean, I think ever since my AMC days, they've been talking about doing another Crow movie. All the way back then, we were talking about this director's attached and this writer's attached and this actor's attached and then nothing happens. And then this writer and this director and this whatever, and then nothing happens. And it's been feeling that way for a long time. Now, brand new report coming out that a guy who's getting pretty hot and whose family has been pretty hot in the industry for a very long time, Bill Skarsgård, is apparently attached now to star in The Crow with Rupert Sanders directing. Uh, This comes just from the folks over at The Hollywood Reporter write the following. After years of false starts and many rings of development hell, The crow appears ready to fly again, so they say. Bill Skarsgård, who played Pennywise the Clown in the It horror movies, will star in the reboot of the supernatural revenge thriller that will be directed by Rupert Saunders, best known for helming Snow White and the Huntsman and Ghost in the Shell. Not ringing credits, but yeah. Uh, Longtime crow steward 
Edward R. Pressman and Malcolm Gray, a co-producer on the 2019 Chadwick Boseman thriller 21 Bridges, are producing. That comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter. All right. Do you believe it or do you not? That's going to be the question. Are they actually doing it now? They're saying this thing is supposed to get in front of cameras like in a couple of months. <laughs> that's what they're saying. They're saying that yeah. this is something that's going to go into production in 2023. Yeah, right. Sure, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> they're saying like this summer, they're going to get in front of cameras this summer. We are too, John. <laughs> Are we making a Crow reboot too? That's yeah. right. We are yeah. also making a Crow reboot. That's right. With Chris Rock playing the Crow. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. Or Chris Carr. Or Chris oh, Carr. The Carr. A little crow. bit of a twist. Oh. Chris Carr, furious after oh, man. gangsters murdered Logan. Now oh she's gosh. out for revenge. Yeah. Oh, I want it to be the literal Crow that like resurrects them. That, I, 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 she's going to be the bird itself. I just want to be the bird. In this movie. So uh, apparently they're going to move forward. Now, uh, uh, Snow White and the Huntsman was not the greatest film in the world. I actually didn't mind the first Snow White and the Huntsman. I thought I, it was I actually fine. actually didn't mind the second one. Uh, not so great. Um, Ghost in the Shell. Again, I didn't think that was a total train wreck of a what movie. A warm fart of a movie. A warm fart of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> I see. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it either. Yeah. I, I I didn't like it either. It had it had some pros going for it. Whatever. But now they're doing this. But again, this is not the first time they've tried to get the crow going, and Bill Skarsgård is not the first guy they've had in there doing it. We've had some others. We're going to start with, just recently, Jason Momoa was all set to be the crow. They were all set, ready to start shooting. They had another director on board. They were literally weeks away from getting that going. That didn't happen. Before Jason Momoa, Tom Hiddleston was attached was to he? start. Yep. He was oh, attached wow. to star as it at one point. And so we were going to see Loki as that. That didn't happen. At one point... We had Boardwalk Empire star Jack Houston. I actually really right, like Jack that's Houston. That's the one I remember. Jack Houston was attached to play uh, the role of that as well. Also attached for quite a while was Luke Evans. That's that's. Oh, I love him. Luke Evans. I mean, uh, there we go. That's Luke Evans. Luke Evans was attached to star star as it. Of course, he's one of the villains in one of the Fast and the Furious movies. He's Gaston in the live action Beauty of the Beast. I personally love Luke Evans. I think he's great. He's I wonderful. thought he would have made a great crow. I really do. Before that, Bradley Cooper at one point. Oh my what? He was. For Bradley why? Cooper was at one point, this is going back years, but he was attached to being it as well. And also at one point, Norman Reedus from Walking Dead. Boy. I can see that. Boondock Saints. It's like the Sinister Six right here. <laughs> was supposed to be, uh, be it as well. And now... Adding his name to that prestigious yeah. list. Yeah, the Hall of Fame. Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, he's well, the one who's going to take it across the finish line. <laughs> and he's going to bring this one home. Way to go, Billy. Uh, look, I'll, I'll say this. Let's assume for a second that this is actually going to happen. All right. Oh, that this is real? That this is real. <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, they've had storyboards in a script for a long time. <laughs> so, I mean, whatever. They say they're going to start shooting it. So let's, for the moment, just for the sake of argument... Make the assumption that it's going to happen. Okay. Not super excited about the director choice, but I mean, not completely turned off by it either. So that, that's fine. Bill Skarsgård, he could be pre. What's the name of the, the Davin, Draven, Durvin? What's the name of the character again? The main uh, character in Crow? Eric. Eric uh, Draven? Yeah, or something, I think like, something that. like that. Yeah. He could be very good in this role. I have actually really started to like Bill Skarsgård. I, I love his portrayal as Pennywise in the It films, but I've seen him in a few other things too, and I, I'm actually really starting to like him a lot. Listen, that whole family is freaking ridiculously talented. Yeah. Like, the offspring of Stellan is ludicrous. Like, Stellan and his offspring, just completely ludicrous, the Skarsgård family. But, I'll yeah, I'll just say this, that I'm down for this. I'm all for it if this actually starts happening. And I will also say this. I just want this movie in our rearview mirror. Like, th this has been a movie that's been talked about for ages and ages and ages and ages with seven different actors attached to it, with four different directors attached to it, all this kind of stuff. 
I'm just ready for this movie to just get done and be in the history books at this yeah. point. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not looking forward to watching it, that it can't be good. Of course it can be. But with all of the drama that's gone on with this movie, it'll be good just to have it out there and done. So I don't know. Chris, you see this. Number one, let's ask, do you believe it's actually going to happen? And then assuming it's going to happen, what would you think about the addition of Bill Skarsgård? I mean, I don't think the movie's actually going to happen. But really? <laughs> I, but talking about it, though, when this being in kind of pre-production hell was an inevitability, right? Because we're in this comic book boom and you're going to go back to some IP that has had success, I think. And this James O'Barr comic from the 80s, you know, little tiny indie thing had legs and they did some stuff with it. I don't know for why we need another Crow movie. There's already so many. Um, <laughs> I just don't I just don't see it coming together. And and supposedly we've got some other casting news too. Um FKA Twigs, the singer-songwriter is supposedly cast according to the Hollywood Reporter um as the fiance in this and they're expanding that role into more of a co-lead as opposed to just, you know, part of the casualty that leads to Eric being resurrected and everything and fighting for her vengeance and all of that. Could be interesting. Is it something I'm particularly interested in? Nah. He kind of looks crowish in that uh, that picture you just. He looks a little crowy. Yeah, right? he looks a little crowy now, right I, there. Yes. There, there's a missed opportunity here. There's a totally missed opportunity. Sting. Sting. <laughs> I knew. I mean, what, I mean, everybody. <laughs> Sting was clearly the guy to get to be the crow. Well, we you have to inform fans who don't watch wrestling. Sting is a re wrestling guy who uses a crow mask. I don't know. He's been around for ages. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find an image for those of you who don't know anything about you know, you know how you get this movie to come out already is if you give it a Netflix, it'll be out in a week. So <laughs> let's give it a Netflix. A week. It'll be fine. I, I just don't you know, if they release this movie, I actually just see it actually it going on streaming and not really like a like it. I can't see I can't I can't see this being a theatric. Yep. Are, by the way, for those of you who are looking for it, there, there's They're Stinger. Staying. There's Stinger right there. How He's, small does that bat look? Yeah, it looks How pretty small. That bat. Look? Yeah, he needs something a little more, uh, a little more threatening, I think, in that hand. But I mean, I think you're right. I, I think this this feels like something that's just destined to be a streamer at this point. Do we know what studio's picking it up? Is it Paramount or? I I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all. If, I, I mean, I honestly didn't look into it. I, it it could very well be a crackle for all that. <laughs> Is crackle still a thing? <laughs> I don't be know. It'll be on uh, Pluto could, coming to you. Be, it's on Pluto, <laughs> Pluto it. exclusive, baby. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I like Pluto TV. That one of my first gigs when I moved to LA was doing the the pitch of Pluto TV. I was the girl who was like, "Hey, if you press this button here, you can share this was video." Was that you? Yeah. I like Pluto. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> Pluto. As soon as I'm ready to go to bed. I just turn it to that unsolved mysteries channel, uh. and then I have nightmares. But I, <laughs> but at least I sleep. <laughs> I, I watch. Um, what do I, I watch? A lot of the, they have a WPT. They have a World Poker Tour oh, channel yeah, on do. that, so I watch that a lot oh, too. Nice. Anyway, guys, question is for you. <laughs> what do you think about this? They're saying Bill Skarsgård is going to be the Crow in the Crow reboot, and they say no, really, for honest pinky swear, we're doing it this time. Uh, do you believe them? Do you think it's actually going to happen? Whatever you guys' thoughts are, jump on down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. Okay, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number five. Chris, what is, I can't imagine, our fifth main topic today? It's a fresh one. Fresh one. <laughs> From Sean Bradley. Hey, John. It's been a week since the Oscars and people are still talking about the slap heard around the world. Since then, Will Smith has resigned from the Academy and several projects, including a fourth Bad Boys movie that's been put on hold. However, it has been disclosed that Netflix and Apple quietly removed their bids for a potential biopic of Smith's life based on the memoir that he wrote last year. What are your thoughts? All right. So I feel like Michael Corleone in Godfather 3. Every time we think we're getting a break from talking about Will Smith, they drag us back in. All right. So, look, we don't have to revisit the whole uh, drama about what happened at the Oscars. We know what happened. Rock made a joke. Smith went up and physically hit him and all this stuff going on. Uh, several important key things have happened, though, over the past couple of days that we do need to discuss. 
I mean, first of all, this is arguably one of the top five movie stars in the world. He is the reigning defending best actor of the year at the Academy Awards. Um, and some things that have come up here are, if you're going to talk about movies, you got to discuss this. One is he did, Will Smith resigned from the Academy. That actually means nothing. Like a lot of people were asking me, do you think that's a significant thing? It's not a significant thing. Resigning from the Academy just means he doesn't get to vote on the Oscars. Yep. That's it. It doesn't, it really means nothing. What will really count is if the Oscars suspend him and remove him from eligibility to be nominated. Because resigning from the Academy, you still get to be nominated for Oscars and all that kind of stuff if you are. So that's kind of irrelevant. What is very relevant, though, is how does this affect the career of the current reigning Best Actor Academy Award winner? And it looks like there are repercussions happening, and they're happening in ways that I didn't even suspect. This comes just from the folks over at IndieWire write the following. The Hollywood Reporter has reported that Netflix is halting development on Fast and Loose, a new film that was set to star Will Smith as a powerful criminal who loses his memory only to learn that he was living a double life. Sources in the story say that Netflix has paused the project and may ultimately scrap it or move forward with a different director and star. But they are wary about working with Will Smith during the fallout from the Oscars. While this would be the first instance of Smith losing a project due to his conduct at the Oscars, the report suggests that it is unlikely to be the last. A source has said that Sony is also pausing development on Bad Boys 4, despite Smith receiving 40 pages of the script before the Oscars, and indicated that some of Smith's other potential projects are likely to meet the same fate. And that, again, comes to us from IndieWire. This, to me, is the worst-case scenario. coming Because, look, having to be resigned from the Oscars, eh, Getting suspended from the Oscars, that could be significant. Getting expelled from the Oscars permanently, that's significant. But the most significant thing is, does it affect the movies he gets to be in moving forward? And honestly, I didn't think it would. But here we are. So they are, number one, saying Netflix is putting the brakes on Fast and Loose. Sony appears to be putting the brakes on bad boys by the way both of which could pick back up again later but for now they're saying that but it may be even more significantly the trades are reporting that both apple and netflix who were in the bidding process for getting the rights to will smith's biography they've pulled out netflix and apple have both pulled out essentially putting a halt to that as well we are talking about maybe the most important movie star of the past 10 to 12 years. Probably, like, today, that's probably Dwayne The Rock Johnson, maybe Ryan Reynolds. But if you're going to look at the last, like, 12, 13 years as a whole, there's not, there's not been a bigger bankable star than Will Smith. And now we're talking about maybe his projects, well, his projects are getting paused, they're putting the brakes on them, they may get scrapped. And one other thing that's pretty significant here is this is that SAG has started to weigh in. And SAG is saying they are beginning disciplinary uh, actions, or at least discussing disciplinary actions, because, of course, Chris Rock is a SAG member, a Screen Actors Guild member, and a Screen Actors Guild member got attacked by another Screen Actors Guild member. Now, they basically say they're going to wait until the Academy rules about what they're going to do, but here's a worst-case scenario. Worst-case scenario. And I can't remember, do you have your SAG card yet, Chris? Oh, yeah. Of course, you're mm -hmm. part of one of the committees. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong here. Please do. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, uh, you know, a lot of the traits laid out SAG's guidelines that they would have to follow and in, in, you know, procedures if they're going to bring disciplinary action against Smith. One of the things they said that is on the table is, is being expelled from the union. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're not a SAG member, that then, to a degree, limits somewhat projects you can and cannot be involved in. Like, mm -hmm. if a major motion picture is being done and it's a union picture, if Will Smith is kicked out of SAG, 
does that not limit? Like, I mean, he doesn't say he couldn't appear in any movies. I'm not saying, but does that not mean that there are going to be some movies that he's not even able to be a part of because he's not a part of the union? Again, this is a worst case scenario that hasn't necessarily yet happened. But if they did that, does that affect him? So it can. But it is a very, very convoluted issue. So you have non-union actors, you have union actors, members of SAG-AFTRA, and then you have uh, FICOR, financial core members, who are uh, dues-paying non-members. That's usually an option that you take uh, if you're somebody who does like a lot of commercials. A lot of commercial work is non-union. A lot of voiceover work is non-union. And so that takes you out of getting all of the benefits of the union um, and can also kind of affect whether or not a SAG production would bring you on. Some people view that in that case as being kind of a, a union scab in ways. And these are other people's words, not mine, um, about whether or not they would allow you in there. Um, there are some notable actors who are that financial core. Being kicked out of the union, though, I think that is something that definitely would have an impact on your castability. Because we talked about this last week. There is the idea of, you know, the <clears throat> uh, court of public approval, right? and ultimately how the public views you. So if we have a whole bunch of people, sag after included, who are saying, hey, we do not condone the actions of this person or we do not view them as a member of our union, that definitely could affect his castability down the road. Does the average person really care about that? Who's to say? If you're a big Bad Boys fan, you probably just want another Bad Boys film and you really don't care about the, the union I know, I want another there, one. Right? I really liked the last one. And, and so I think that's something that's going to come into play here too. Will Smith can still bring box office numbers. Could it mean that a casting associate or a casting director is less likely to bring him in for discussions? Maybe. But I think this also really, really means how does everyone globally view Will Smith as a person who they want to go see in films? I, you know, I, I, I've always kind of been torn of this. I, from everything we know about Will Smith, we talked about this before. This is not a pattern of behavior we've seen from Will Smith. Not that we've seen, no. No, this, this has been from all accounts, an isolated oddity uh, or what, a, a, an aberration? Is that the word for it? Like it's something that, that's completely out of character, hasn't happened before. This is not, I don't believe we should judge people based on their worst moment. And this was Will Smith's worst moment. He still did it. And that action needs to be, needs to be addressed. And there needs to be consequences. I got to tell you this though, considering it was an isolated incident and I am okay with the Academy suspending him and maybe even SAG suspending him. Mm -hmm. I feel like stopping development on bad boys is a little bit of an overreach. I feel like stopping development on, or no longer being interested in the Will Smith biopic, I feel like that's a little bit of an overreaction. Stopping development on a, a movie you're already in the process of putting together with uh, Fast and Loose with Will Smith. I feel like that's a little bit of an overreaction. I think so. I mean, because look, I get it. As Robert would always say, as Rob always says, it's not show friends, it's show business. And if you think having a certain person in your movie will hurt your business, then you step away from that. I get that. And I got a feeling, and maybe I'm wrong, I got a feeling like maybe one of the reasons they're saying they're putting a pause on this is because maybe these studios just want to see how does public perception pan out after a few weeks? You know, maybe like a month from now, you know, Netflix and Sony and Apple and whatever, maybe they'll just reassess in like a month, say, how has people, how have people reacted? Mm -hmm. Like maybe the best thing in the world here would be for Smith to get like a two or three year suspension from the Academy. And then the general public perception is that's enough. You know, yeah, and it's like, OK, there was something bad happened. It got dealt with. Now let's all, including Will Smith, move forward. And maybe that suspension happens and then everybody's cool with it. And then the other places can get involved and start rolling. But but right now it looks like they're putting the pause on these. And Chris, do you think these are movies that are ultimately going to get scrapped or do you think they'll ultimately start moving forward once the dust settles? I think they'll move forward, honestly. I really, really do. I think right now it's just it's. No one knows how to react to this thing, right? And so it's it, it's going back to the what's the right and wrong of this? How does the public feel about it? How do we feel about it? 
You know, I, I think a lot of people are just trying to see who does what so they can make their own decisions. That's what we're seeing here with the Academy and SAG, frankly. That's what I think. Their, their investigation is pending. They're investigating while they watch other people do things. And, and just real quick, going back to that, too. If the union or these other people could kick somebody out because, as the union states, you can do so um, if anyone engages in actions that are antagonistic to the interests or integrity of the union. That's a lot of actors on film and television sets. Right. And things have gotten better, I will say that. But we have heard horror stories. I've been around those horror stories. I mean, Aaron and I have talked about this, of, of actors behaving incredibly poorly on set to and around other union members. And that's kind of what the issue is here, right? Of this is what happened with him and Chris Rock. A lot of other people are going to have to be dealt with in a similar way if we set a precedence like this. And so that's part of this. Do you want to set a precedence? Do you want to, if something like this happens and you do apologize, if you do show ch change behavior, do all your projects and all your prospects get taken away? I hope they don't. I really, really hope that in this case that Will Smith continues to work and make films because I enjoy him as an actor. And uh, thus far, I've enjoyed him as a public persona, too. I really, really think that once the dust settles, we're going to see these movies go back into production. One can only hope. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think? There's been a lot of movement over the weekend from SAG weighing in on things, his resignation from the Academy, Netflix pausing one of the films, Sony apparently is putting pause on Bad Boys, Apple and Netflix pulling out of a potential biopic. How do you guys see all this stuff shaking out right now? What do you think would be the best outcome right now for Will Smith? Do you think some of these reactions are overreactions? Whatever you guys are feeling about it, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second and thank one of the sponsors of this video, Stamps.com. You know, they call what I and what a lot of you guys do small business, but to us, it doesn't seem small. It's the world to us, and you can't afford to miss out on opportunities to grow and keep your customers wanting more. Because time is money. Don't waste either with repeated trips to the post office. With Stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process, so you can spend less time at the post office and more time making Making your customers happy. Stamps.com gives you access to all of the post office and UPS shipping services that you need right from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. So stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code CAMPIA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com and click on the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code CAMPIA. And a big thank you to the folks at Stamps.com for being a sponsor of today's episode of The John Campia Show. Okay, guys, with all that down, let's now move over and start taking your live comments and questions and see what you guys have to say. Chris, what do we got up here first? We are starting things off with Chef Rigo. Chef Rigo. Chef Rigo. WrestleMania thoughts, guys. Uh, I didn't see day two. I saw a, a bunch of day one during Anne's birthday party. Mm -hmm. Pretty fun from what I saw, mm -hmm. uh, but I did not see day two. You saw the whole thing though, I right, did, Chris? What yeah. do you think of it overall? Day two, I don't think y'all missed much. Um, I loved, loved the four on four battle of the ladies. That was excellent. That was wonderful. Naomi and Sasha Banks just crushing it. Day one was awesome though. It was that Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch match for me. That was incredible. What did you think, Ray? Uh, I only saw the first night, but and the, yet I still missed a bunch of the first night, but I did like the Stone Cold thing. It was way better than I thought that it would be. That was way better yeah. than I thought it That yeah, could have gone so bad yeah. in so many ways. I thought the Stone Cold thing well, was pretty good. Kevin Owens can sell anything. Exactly. Kevin Owens, good Canadian kid, by the way. Yeah. Kevin Owens is one of the best talents they have in the WWE right now. Mm -hmm. He is. That, like, I only watch like three events a year, but every time Kevin Owens is there, he 100% like steals it. like the, the, yeah. that dude's incredible he's he amazing. was very good on the mic that night oh my oh, god yeah. he yeah. was so funny i almost wanted to cheer for him that match he was that right. good but yeah great. Uh, i think i'm gonna try to catch the replay of the second night sometime after aliens tonight sometime i don't know <laughs> we'll see i saw him watch that. all right what's next uh from chris minor did you watch mania this year stone gold baby i mean it was cool seeing stone cold back in there he hasn't missed a beat 19 years yeah and he never missed a beat it was really cool and to stone see him back cold was great on night two i will say that when all right, again in. i didn't see night two yet all right what's next from mp one of four 
with a twenty dollars super chat. Oh, thank, thank you, so MT. Is that Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> yes, Manny. <laughs> Manny, what's Manny? up, Manny? That's how I can afford these super chats. Hello, Campia crew. I want to talk about Kogan's Joker. I hate Matt Reeves's makeup design. The penguin design was good, but if they're going with prosthetic makeup design for the Joker, what a great opportunity to ac accentuate the handsome features of his face, equivalent to the comic. I understand they're going with a disfigured acid look versus the comic, where the chemicals just make his skin white. But I didn't. Uh, I don't see why they always have a ch have to change it. It's not like with every new film they are egregiously changing Batman's look. Okay, new Batman movie. Let's give Batman a tattoo on his forehead. Okay, now a top hat and cane. Okay, now here's a skateboard. I would love Batman with a skateboard. <laughs> the bat board. Just give him uh, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles treatment. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to disagree with you on this, MP, because just like his origin story, there is, like, like you mentioned, just like his look in the comic. Which look in the comic? The comics are portrayed Joker very differently uh, like all over the place, many different times, many different ways from many different artists and all that kind of stuff. Like even Joker's origin stories in the comic is nebulous at best, right? And so they've always done different looks for him. Mm -hmm. I love that every single one of the Joker iterations has been a fresh new look at him while still maintaining the core of who and what the Joker is. The Joker is chaos, right? And every single one they've given us has been that. And yet they've all been completely unique. And if you're going to do Joker five different times in like 15 years, then you've got to do that. You've got to make him unique in his own way. They've also done that with Batman. Now, look, Batman has a definitive classic look of what Batman is. He's the square jawed, good looking playboy millionaire, blah, 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 blah. So there's, there's a certain limitation about how drastic you can go from that. Joker... It's an open field. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with that. And listen, we never really got a clear look at Kugan's Joker. We never got a clear look at him. But I'm cool with the approach that they're taking. And, and I think it's good that they do this and that they mix it up every single time or else it would get very sameness very quickly. So I don't know. What what did you think about the look of him, Chris? I agree with it. I love that he's got the acid burns all over his face and stuff. I think it's great because that that's the kind of Joker I love. I'm a big Batman the Animated Series kid too, though, because that that cartoon was so life changing for me. That was everything for me. So going back to the vats of acid and stuff like that as well, just are super fun in my opinion. It fits with uh, Reeves' uh, vision, I yeah. think. It just fits. I mean, I would love to see the Joker he's talking about, but it would have to be in another another iteration of Batman. I, you're right. It got this, what we saw ever so shortly does feel like it fit the Reeves world. Yeah. So I personally liked it, but hey, MP didn't quite work for you. And that's great. Thank you for sharing your perception on that, man. We appreciate that, dude. All right. What's next? Uh, from our buddy Andy. If I have four kids, I'm naming them Oscar, Tony, Emmy, and Grammy. So I can say I've got EGOT. <laughs> now, if only I could name a child Kids' Choice Awards. Oh, yeah. That would be the key thing. You could. By that the kid's way, gonna who, get beat up. who was it that they said is closing in on an EGOT? It Lynn? was Who? Lin-Manuel Miranda. Did he? He hasn't won an Oscar, has he? Did he win an no, Oscar? No, he's just got to get the Oscar. Did That's he it. not get the Oscar for... Um, no. What won Best Song this year? That's a great question. It, but it wasn't the the Encanto one? No. Was um, it Billie Eilish? Yes, it was It Billie was Billie Eilish, Eilish. that's right. Her, I was going to say, it was like some spy movie, James but, Bond. Wow. I mean, that, I mean, listen, Andy, you would be the ultimate conversation starter at a party. I want you to meet my children, <laughs> Oscar, Tony, Emmy, and Grammy. This is my EGOT. I think that would be pretty cool. All right, what's next? All right, from Christian301291. Hi, guys. You are my favorite movie news channel. Oh, thank you, Christian. By the way, loved seeing Rob shout out Dream Theater Grammy. G Dream Theater's Grammys win on Twitter. Melheads for life. Yeah, and again, uh, Rob is, of course, not here today. He is moving into his new house. Yeah. Today is the last day of his move. And so we gave him the day off so we can focus on that. But he'll be back again tomorrow for sure. Thanks for writing that in, Christian. I'm sure he'll love to hear that. All right, what's next? Mr. 47. Will Smith revokes his Academy status. Academy and Bane voice. Your punishment must be more severe. Yeah, I think. You know what? I should. I want to point this out. I think the best thing that Will Smith has said since this whole thing was once he resigned the Academy, he said, 
and I think this is this is the perfect attitude for him to have. He said, and I in advance accept any further disciplinary action the academy deems fit. Mm -hmm. To me, that is the absolute 100% right thing for him to say in that coin. It's like, okay, so number one, I'm going to resign my, my spot on the academy, which he knows doesn't really mean much, but still, that's not the important thing. The important thing is he says in advance, I completely accept whatever the academy decides to do moving forward. Exactly. I think that's a mature thing to say. I think that I think that will go a long way with the academy as they now decide what to do about it. So I, honestly, I, I think that was the perfect thing for him to say there. Absolutely. Kudos it to him for that. It makes it feel a little less, I'm not breaking, you're not breaking up with me, I'm breaking up with you. Yes, that's exactly right. Because it could have felt like that. It's like, ha ha, you can't fire me, I quit. No, 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 no. It was, okay, I will resign and I also accept any further punishment. I think that was the absolute, absolute right thing for him to say. All right, what's next? Carl Jr., Doctor Strange 2 tickets go on sale Wednesday. Ticket watch tomorrow? Uh, again, like if the tickets were going to go on sale at midnight, yes. Unfortunately, no. Because uh, if they're on, if the tickets go on sale at 6 a.m., I ain't doing a stream at 6 a.m. Uh, and I don't think, no matter how much I pleaded, that I could get Ray to be here at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to do that. So, say, no, I probably no ticket watch. Now, if we find out that they do go on sale at midnight, or if we find out they go on sale at like 9 p.m., then I'll be back yeah. for my screening. We can do it. But it, 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 right now, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately. All right, what's next? From Andy again. Is it just me, or did Morbius just rip off Batman Begins with a scene with the bats? Did they also rip off Hans Zimmer's score from Batman Begins as well? I, I mean, we talked about this the other day. That scene that you see in the trailer where he's standing in the, in the thing with the bats and they're all flying around him, not only did that visually completely lift from Batman. The music in it, it wasn't actually lifted, but man, it sounded like the music in that scene was completely lifted from Batman yeah. Begins as well. I mean, I don't know how they got away got away with that or thought they could get away with that, but it was it was pretty egregious. It was pretty egregious the, to be the honest. The same with way the they apparently hid that bat tower from that female doctor. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Uh, all right, what's next? Uh, K Major sending in a $50 super oh chat. Oh my gosh, K, thank you so much yeah. for supporting us on that level, K Major. That's super generous of you, man. Thank you. Hey, John and crew, hope you had an awesome weekend. I was watching the Grammys, and I know you don't really care about them. One thing I noticed is that they run a tight show. Is there anything the Oscars producers and directors can learn from the Grammys? I, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I do not care about the Grammys. I, I don't watch the Grammys. I'm not saying it, nobody else should care about them. Not at all. I'm just telling you I don't care about them. But it seems like they have 85 different categories. I mean, it feels like they make up tons of categories so people can get wins. I, I mean, whatever. I know my wife really likes the Grammys. She was staying up last night to watch the Grammys. Uh, I walked through the room as Chris Stapleton won one. I, gotta, I really like Chris Stapleton. I really that dude's voice is awesome. I I, I love he he does a song with um with uh, what's his name Justin Timberlake. Oh. That was one of my favorite songs the last couple of years called Say Something. And there's also a great YouTube video. I don't know if you've seen it, but of it's at I think the Country Music Awards and Chris Stapleton and Justin Timberlake are on stage together and they sing a medley of two of their songs mm -hmm. put together. One's called I Can't Drink You Away by Justin Timberlake. And one's called, um, what's the one Chris Stapleton does about, uh, you're as smooth as Tennessee whiskey, you're as sweet as I don't know country wine. music. I'm and a so, bad Texan. So definitely drinking songs, right? Oh. But it's seriously one of the best performances I've seen in a video in a while. So I kind of like that. But yeah, listen, the Oscars need to learn a lot about tightening up their show. They need to learn a lot. And this year, you know, you think they were learning that by doing some pre-recorded segments, which I thought worked very well. And I did not feel at all like they felt disrespectful. I felt like they were still fully respectful, kept it tight. But what's the point in doing that if you're going to still add 45 minutes of more exactly. stuff? They absolutely need to tighten that show up. I'm not saying it has to be an hour long. But my God, if you can't do it under three hours, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. So they, they definitely do need to learn a lesson here. All right. Anyway, thanks for sending that in, K-Major. Super appreciate it, man. All right. What's next? For Michael Johnston, just realized that Singing in the Rain turns 70 next Monday. Oh, my gosh. I've never seen it, but the anniversary might be a good time as any to watch. Oh, it, yeah. It's a magical movie. It's so cute. It's totally dated. It, it totally yeah. is. But there's something 
there's a joy about that era of films. Like mm -hmm. there's a joyous feeling about that era of films that you just feel the magic of the movies a little bit. And Singing in the Rain is one of those big ones. So yes, absolutely, yeah. Michael. Take any advantage you can to watch these classic films and that's one of them. All right, what's next? Andy, Morbius had the worst mid credit scenes ever. Never have I seen a studio go out of their way to deliver obviously desperate, lazily made key jangling. It was the worst. It was so bad. Now, I will often feel like, ah, as usual, us film fans are over-exaggerating it. No. No. No, it's the worst. It's really bad. It was so bad. And I didn't hate this movie, but that was so bad. And it, it reeked of desperation. Mm -hmm. And the worst part to me, without giving any details away, was that something, a lesson that I thought they had learned from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, they totally didn't learn. Nope. I mean, it was it was absolutely abysmal, Andy. All right, what's next? From Dante. Hey, can't be a campers. <laughs> so damn pissed off. Saturday night, some dumbass hacked my AMC account and spent $140 on Morbius tickets and concessions. <laughs> I 100% blame Adam Aaron for no goddamn security on the app. So pissed. My oh, goodness. Man. Did somebody actually get into your account? I hope that wasn't past Dante. Did past Dante screw up things for future Dante? Were you? Did you I get mean, out of Morbius and go, I was yeah, robbed? Okay, let's, uh, since we're all sharing the craziest um, fraud credit things that we've had, um, mine recently, someone charged $200 for Papa John's. And I know what you're thinking. That was you, Ray. <laughs> it says, no, it, it wasn't. Sounds like Ray. I wish it was me, but it wasn't. <laughs> oh no! Did you? Did your uh, bank take care of? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I, I caught. It. I was just actually checking on another charge, and they're like, "Wait, we see other charges here." I was like, "Okay, name me the first one, whatever." Mm -hmm. They're like two hundred dollars at Papa John's. I was like, "Nope." <laughs> and then something else with like a. Uh, it sounded like a Chinese company. I was like, nope. So got my card replaced. I got to say this. It just happens. Yeah. I got to say this. And we are not sponsored by the Bank of America at all here. But I got to say, whenever anything remotely fishy has happened with my bank accounts, I got to say Bank of America has always stepped up and taken care of it. Like, oh, this happened. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that wasn't me. No problem. We'll get the money back in your account. Like, no matter what it's been, I've been with them now for like 12 years. And any, I even got scammed once on Craigslist. Like, it was my own fault. Mm -hmm. I got scammed on Craigslist for concert tickets. And I paid for them. And that's the last time I'll ever do that. And I got a hold of the bank. And it wasn't their fault at all. And I explained to them what happened. They're like, we got you. Aww. And they're like, and they refunded my money. At the same time, Wells Fargo? My wife, Ann, just got scammed for a bunch of money out of her Wells Fargo account. Mm. And they did nothing about it. They did nothing. And we're she's now looking at getting out, getting away from Wells Fargo. Now, really? I got to be careful because I think we have family that works at Wells Fargo. But, no. And our mortgage is at Wells Fargo. But... Uh, we're looking to get away for Wells Fargo. I, all I'm saying is that Bank of America has treated me very well. I, if I were you, Dante, I wouldn't blame AMC. Although I, I, I'm always, I always encourage people to blame Adam Aaron for anything wrong going on with your life. Acne, Adam Aaron. Girlfriend dumped you, Adam, Adam Aaron. Aaron. But, but in this case, I would get a hold of your bank and see if there's something they could do about it, Dante. Anyway, yeah. sorry you had that experience, dude. All right, what's next? From Fifi. Happy Monday, crew. I feel like every day we all say, okay, this is the last time we talk about the slap herd around the world, <laughs> but just keeps finding a new way to be the number one topic. I oh, mean, well. here's the thing. You know, there was a little bit of a discussion going on before the show started in the live chat with some, you know, somebody wrote, oh, are we talking about Will Smith again? It's like, okay, I get that. I do. But one of the top movie stars in the world, the current reigning Best Actor Academy Award winner is having movie projects taken away from him. If and I and I said in our live chat, I said if you can point me to a bigger movie news story in the world of movies right now, I'll change the headline topic. I'll change it. To which they said, "Well, I guess there's not a bigger one than that." I said, "Yeah." So yeah. I mean, of course, we got to talk about. It. I mean, that's the biggest thing in the world of movies right now. And you know, then somebody said, "Well, all you guys talk about lately is Will Smith." I'm like, "No." I said, to, "If you look in our description, we have seven topics today." One of them is Will Smith. On the last episode, on the last episode where a Will Smith topic was there, we had like eight topics. One of them was Will Smith. So no, Will Smith is not the only thing we are talking about. But as long as significant new developments happen that affect 
the one of the biggest movie stars in the world it's going to be something we need to talk about because that's what we do here but anyway all right what's next all right from jessica quintel the godfather part four with the children and grandchildren of the original cast nah that's that's just that would just be a gimmick um so especially if you do it with the original cast if you say it's of the original characters well I, I, look there's there's something to be said about maybe going back to the godfather and looking at because obviously michael corleone dies at the end of godfather three but what happens with the family his kids stuff like that that happens afterwards i i don't know maybe there's some there but probably not i would feel a little gimmicky jessica to be honest with you although i'd be lying if i didn't say i would be at least a little interested in it if they said they were doing it of course i would all right thanks for that jessica what's next from reamer bulldog oh i think these are kara black oh shoot yes kara black john did you get a chance to see wrestlemania 38 this weekend and witness stone cold steve austin's final match well for 19 years i thought i already saw Stone cold steve austin's final match but listen was he a little older? Yeah. A little bit slower? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's he's still maybe the best damn salesman in professional wrestling history? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has Mike skills like him, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, your holy trinity of Mike skills ever in the history of WWE. He was... The camera shot of his beer, too, at the end of the match, just perfectly in frame. Like, yeah, you know, you know what you're doing. You know promotion of Broken Skull Beer was definitely a part of the oh, deal. Yeah. But you know what? It was fun seeing Stone Cold. I got to say this too. I have not been a regular watcher of wrestling for a good 10 years. Mm -hmm. I watched the Hall of Fame induction of The Undertaker. And I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I would be lying if I didn't tell you I got a little choked up watching it. I, I spent a lot of my years as a younger John Campia watching undertaker yeah and hearing him tell stories and stuff like that and seeing him finally saying goodbye to the i mean i got a little bit choked up to me the highlight of wrestlemania weekend was undertaker being inducted in the hall of fame yeah. but anyway that was just that all right what's next reamer bulldog are going to get a ticket watch from dr strange multiverse of madness again <laughs> it, it, it will probably not because i'm going to be at a screening for uh secrets of dumbledore that day but if the time if they announce what time the tickets go on sale and it works, then we will otherwise probably not. Unfortunately. That's going to be a long day for you, huh? Because yeah. later when you get back, there's Moon Knight, right? On Wednesday night? Yep. Moon Knight. No, no, no. Yeah, Moon oh, Knight's Tuesday, Tuesday night. Oh, so Tuesday. Midnight, oh, that's yeah. tomorrow. But that's still because I've got a screening of Ambulance tomorrow. Oh. I'm going to go see Ambulance tomorrow. Interested to see what you say about that movie. Yeah, I'm interested too because I don't think the trailers have been all that good, but everybody else loves the trailers. But then we definitely, we've got, we've got Moon Knight tomorrow night. So, yes. All right. What's next? All right. From Whitehawk. Watch the Batman over the weekend. I loved it. Decided to have an Arkham game marathon. Oh, nice. I mean, that is, I'm telling you what, I, Ann and I were talking the other day. I have still not seen the Batman for a third time yet. Yeah. I've still only seen it twice. And I desperately got to get back out and watch it before they drop it on and dump it on hbo yeah. i gotta go see it on the big screen again really soon so yeah that would be inspiring white cock glad you had a chance to watch it i'm glad you enjoyed it man all right what's next john redcorn tyrese just posted a fake scorsese quote on instagram saying morbius is cinema and thought it was real get your boy john shake my head <laughs> hey listen like i know tyrese and i have some history but um I, what, whatever the problems of Morbius are, none of the problems was Tyrese. I mean, I had a problem with like the way they wrote the character. Yeah. It's like, what was even the point of him being there? But hey, listen, Tyrese took that character and he did the the best anybody could in that situation with the character that he was given. So I got I got nothing but good things to say about Tyrese in the movie, to be honest with yeah. you. So good for him. All right, and, and that's pretty funny. Martin Scorsese says, this is true cinema. That's pretty good. All right, what's next? Hey, Marcellus, holy crap. Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga is so much fun. Y'all need to play. Available on all consoles. Matt was over here the other night, Ray. Mm -hmm. And Matt was our buddy Matt. You guys remember Matt Barnard. He, he was my co-host on For Your Consideration back in the days. Mm -hmm. But Matt was over here the other day. And uh, he was he was saying they got it. They, they ordered it, but it hadn't come in yet. I'm hearing great things about A. Marsalis. I'm absolutely... Is it available yet on PlayStation? What game are they, you guys on? The Star Wars Skywalker Saga Lego? I'm oh, hearing nothing but good things about it, but I just don't know if it's available on PlayStation 5 yet. 
So I just need people uh, to let me know if it's good or not. Because I'm hearing, so far, I've heard good things. Okay, people say it comes out tomorrow. Uh, okay. CJ Chaos and Michael Gonzalez. Uh, by the way, C- CJ Chaos is a new member to the channel. Thank you for that, CJ. Um, comes out tomorrow. I- I'm hearing good things. I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm absolutely going to check that out. All right, what's next? All right, from uh, JSW11984. Problem with Daylight Savings Time, the Joan Campia show on at 5 a.m. Positive side, though, Disney Plus shows now on at 7 p.m. I am so ready, JSW, for them to for the world to just get rid of it. It's it's not it's not a necessary thing anymore. No. Just get rid of the damn thing and we'll be back to good normal. Sorry about it being at 5 a.m. where you live, man. I wouldn't even do the show at 5 a.m. Uh, Logan grew up on a farm as a farmer, and so I always like to say that it's his fault. And there you go. Just like to get in his face and be like, it's because of you. Yep, not relevant anymore. All right, what's next? Jesse has a turtle. Nice. Good for Jesse. Hi, John. I know you mentioned it in the past, but did you ever end up seeing the new format for Movie Pass? And if so, what did you think about I it? I did not. I mean, I remember we talked about that they were relaunching Movie Pass, which I think because it got rid of the people who were currently owning it and it went back to the original founder of Movie Pass, you know, when it was a good thing mm-hmm. before the new owners screwed it up. And I've said I'd be very interested to see what they do with Movie Pass, but I have not seen what the new format is. But that's thank you for reminding me about that, Jesse. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that and go check yeah. that out. Thank you for the reminder of that. All right, what's next? From Mr. Hank Dunn, John, you're right. Die Hard Three is. I the think best- we can just end it right there. <laughs> I mean, that's, just, that's, just, that's just a logo for life, I think. Okay, no, by all means, please continue. <laughs> Die Hard 3 is the best Die Hard, and, in my opinion, it is the best action movie of all time. Wilson and Jackson are aces in that movie. I, I know people look at me strange, because it's strange to hear anybody say that the best Die Hard movie is anything other than the first one. Mm-hmm. I think the third one is the best one. Now, granted, Hans Gruber is a top three greatest villain so in good. cinematic history. Absolutely. But... The dynamic between Sam Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis and Jeremy Irons as, uh, what's his name? It's not Hans, it's... Uh, uh, he's his I almost want to say Franz Gruber. No, it's not Hans and Franz. <laughs> it's, I can't remember, but as Gruber's brother, I can't remember his first name, but is so good. Like the one line, Simon Gruber. Thank you, CJ, is his name, Simon Gruber. Just the one line that Jeremy Irons says, Good Lord. I mean, that to me makes a move, but I love that movie so much. It is my favorite of the Die Hard movies. All right, what's next? From Al Renshaw. I have my popcorn ready for Rob Star uh, for Rob Star Trek rant. Now, of course, no Star Trek rant today. No. Look, I, I have not talked to Rob yet today, but you and I were talking about this before the show, Star Crest. I am actually predicting that Rob liked this new trailer. I because I, I, I watched it. I think this looks like it would be right up his alley. So I'm going to be really surprised if he didn't like this strange new world. So I'm going to predict that when we talk to Rob tomorrow and I ask him about, it, he's going to say he liked it. I think he probably liked this trailer. It doesn't mean he's going to like yeah. the show, but I think he liked the trailer. But at the same time, even if you're right, he will go back and complain about another Star Trek about something else. Yeah. He can't. He can't just give. <laughs> it has to be give and take with Rob in Star he's, Trek. He's only given a Bridget Jones argument about Spock so far. Of like, he should really seriously consider the length of his sideburns. Yeah, that's the only negative I've heard so far. All right, what's next? From Big D Studios Entertainment with a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Big D. With Oscar Isaac's contract ending after season one of Moon Knight. Do you think we'll see him in the next Avengers film? If so, do you think it'll be a different title? Um, yeah, look, a lot of people have been making a big deal out of the fact that Oscar Isaac only had a, a one series deal, a one season deal. That's really not a big deal. No. It's not a big deal. They, the, Oscar Isaac did not sign up to this to only do one season. You know, he probably signed up for with the understanding that, yeah, of course, if this works, I want to do more. But Rob and I discussed this before. I'm not expecting to see Moon Knight in the Avengers. No. For many different reasons. Uh, But Rob Rob put it best uh, when we talked about the the possibility of him being an Avenger. So I don't expect to see him in Avengers, but I do expect to see him around more in the MCU. And with the reaction from the first episode, now who knows? We may watch a new episode tomorrow night and think it's now hot garbage. And maybe the whole show goes downhill downhill from here. But if it can maintain... That quality level I had from the first one, there's definitely going to be more Moon Knight. It doesn't matter that he's only signed a one-film deal so far. They'll they'll extend it. It doesn't matter if Moon Knight ends up being garbage. They need to keep Oscar Isaac 
Isaac with him. He's a hell of an actor. He yeah. is so good. So good. They'll oh. find something for him. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks a lot for writing that in, Big D. Appreciate that, man. All right. What's next? From Suthius. Fun fact. Miss C and I have the same birthday as the one and only Clark Gregg. Oh, I didn't realize that. Aww. I love Clark Gregg. What a nice guy. He is a, a super sweet, nice guy. sweet man with so much talent. I'm actually oh. going to, let me do a quick, I don't know that if I have it. I've shown this picture before. Um, uh, let me, I'm not sure if I, if I can find this. No, I probably can't. One of my favorite pictures that I actually have is of me and Clark Gregg but I can't find it right now. So I, I'm not going to waste time. Okay, what's next? From MP, if Marvel Studios is Clark Griswold, then Sony associate with Marvel is Cousin Eddie. <laughs> I see. I, I understand. It's, it's, it's all the cool thing to pretend like Sony is really bad at what they do. Mm -hmm. But they keep proving over and over again they're not. And yeah, like any studio... They have some duds, like Morbius, to me, although it's got a 70% audience rating. But to me, it's, that one's a, a stumble. But when you go back and look what they do, their overall record is actually quite good. And that's why I believe in Sony Studios. But they will drop the ball here and there. But yeah, obviously Marvel does it better, sure. Although, I stand by this today. Sony has made two Spider-Man movies that are better than any Spider-Man movie Marvel's made in Into the Spider-Verse and Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2. They've also made worse Spider-Man movies than Marvel ever did. True. No. But that's just the thing with Sony. It's like they're like any other studio. They're going to put out a movie. They got the potential to be fantastic, and they got the potential to not be so good. So, I don't much, know. Much well, like Cousin Eddie pointed out, though, he got a lip fungus but he haven't quite identified yet. <laughs> that's a good line. All right, what's next? Uh, John Redcorn, what's worse, Morbius or Doolittle? Morbius isn't that bad. I mean, it's Doolittle. not good. Doolittle's horrible. Doolittle's worse. Doolittle's one of the worst films ever made. So yeah, that, they're not like Morbius looks like Amadeus compared to Doolittle. <laughs> I mean, Morbius looks like an Oscar winner compared to Doolittle. So that one's easy. All right, what's next? From Dante again. Hi again. All seems to be good. AMC repaid me. Bring on the oh, movie. Oh, look. Hey, you know what That's though? Great. That probably had something to do with a really good customer service person. It had nothing to do with Adam Aaron. Yeah. Adam Aaron doesn't fix anybody's problems. He just makes problems. All right, what's next? Mark Hansen. Saw Adam Sandler has a new dramatic role in The Hustle, but it's on Netflix, so. I'll say this. I have yet to be disappointed by an Adam Sandler dramatic offering. Mm -hmm. I've been disappointed plenty of times with Adam Sandler comedies, especially the last 10 years. But I have yet to be disappointed in a dramatic film of his. He's, he He's is great. a naturally gifted dramatic actor. And so, and which service did, um, um, uh, what's the diamond one he just did? Um, he just won, he oh, won the uh, Spirit Uncut Award. Gems? Uncut Gems. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't that a streaming one? Didn't that go straight to streaming? No, that was in theaters. Was it in theaters? Yeah. Oh, I totally forgot about that for some reason. But hey, listen, if it's a dramatic movie, even if it's on Netflix, I'll give it my attention to see how that turns out. All right, what's next? Uh, Disney Freak 309. Have you guys seen the set pictures for the sequel of Disney's Enchanted, Disenchanted? I'm so excited to see the sequel later this year on Disney+. Plus. I have not. I haven't seen anything about it. But I am very pro this movie. I love the first one. I really like the first one, too. So charming. And I love that they're going back to revisit it again. Is it a little late? Yeah, it's a little late. That's fine. But I think this could be really special, too. Because, I, again, I really like the first one. So oh, we'll yeah. see how this one goes. All right. What's next? Hey, well, oh. So the chat is just telling me today, or I think today is also Pedro Pascal's birthday. I thought it was yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Or maybe, well, today or yesterday. Whatever the well, time Well, happy goes. birthday, happy Mr. Happy Mandalorian. Birthday Pedro yeah. Pascal. Starring in the upcoming Nick Cage. <laughs> uh, Nick Cage movie which looks like it could be a lot of fun or horrible. We'll see how that goes. All right, what's next? From uh, NM Mander uh, 33. Hi, John and crew. I saw Morbius yesterday, and I have one piece of advice for Toby and Andrew. Run for your lives and don't look back. Where's the second part of this? Um, I didn't hate the movie, but I didn't understand the many questionable choices they made. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah, I... I <sighs> That's a good summation. The, here's the main problem. You could tell, watching the movie, all the pieces were there. Like er, everything they needed to make a great movie. I thought the setup was good. 
I thought their basic concept was a great concept. Uh, I mean, Jared Leto, I think, did as well in the roles anybody could have done. He, he was sucking down those Capri Suns <laughs> so, so well. Gosh. I, they, and that just adds to the frustration, though, that they clearly had all the pieces to make a really fun, memorable comic book movie. And they, through a series of really bad choices, messed it up. Yeah. And it's one thing when you watch a movie and you realize, well, this thing's going to be garbage right from the get-go. But this had all the right pieces. It even made me change my mind for a second of, oh, okay. This might be all right. This might be okay. And then there was just bad writing, worse editing, so many bad choices. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. But, yeah, I, I can't see... I don't know what their plans were in the future. I cannot see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield ever agreeing to be in either one of these movies. Yeah. Not that they were ever going to be, but if they offered it to them now, they're going to be like, no. Like, yeah. why would I do that? All right, what's next? From Jordan Ellis. John, how about that UNC versus Duke game? Great game. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. I wanted to, though, because I was really interested in seeing Coach K's final game, but I didn't see it. But apparently went down to the wire. I think, I think UNC, North Carolina won by three. I think it was a tight game right down to the wire. So, uh, hey, what a great way for him to go out. All right, what's next? Uh, A.V. Kelly saw Moonfall over the weekend. Woo! <laughs> Went in with zero expectations. Came in with a smile on my face. It was a fun ride. Me and my cousin had a blast. Uh, good. I'm legitimately happy for you. I wanted to have fun watching that movie. Yeah. I, I had a great time. It was you, hilarious having you be so upset. You, you just had a great time because you were watching yeah. me going, oh, my God, what are they doing? <laughs> I mean, Ray, I don't even think you had fun. I, it's you? my favorite comedy of the year, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Chris said she heard me laugh the whole time, and I was. Yeah. I, we could. The whole because we so didn't great. sit. So me and Chris did not sit with Rob and Ray. We had two different sets of tickets. But all you could hear through the whole theater was Ray going, ha, ha, ha. Like it was when something so great. Went. It was either in pain or enjoyment. <laughs> it was just a You would have mechanism. to guess. <laughs> all right, but I'm glad you had a good time, wow. uh, AV. I'm glad you had fun at it, man. All right, what's next? Uh, CJ Rebirth. Morbius wasn't great, but I was entertained. Second viewing, second viewing was better because it was in IMAX. I liked the Michael Dr. Martine pairing. That's her name, Dr. Martine. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember her name for the life of me. That was one of the stronger parts of the movie to me was that relationship. I kind of liked it. I, I never felt like they over rose peddled it. Mm -hmm. um, it 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 felt good to me. I, I I enjoyed it. I mean, it's not Tony and Pepper, but no. it, I mean, it was, it was all right. Um, again, you're not alone, CJ. I, like I said, the it's got a 70% audience rating right now. Yeah. Good for it. Um, that means people are coming out and at least finding something. Like Anne came out, she she liked it. She didn't love it, but she liked it. And I think a lot of people are feeling that way. So I'm glad you had a good time, CJ. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, from AJ Shark. Chris, hi. What's your favorite line from Muppet Christmas Carol? Mine's even the vegetables don't like him. <laughs> That's a great line. Oh, man, there's so many. I love uh, God Save My Little Broken Body. I love uh, the jelly bean bit. I love when they all go, heat wave. This is my island in the sun. Oh, it's perfect. It's a perfect movie. <laughs> Thank you for sending that in, AJ. <laughs> all right, what's next? KH, just dropping in and supporting when I can since it's hard for me to watch live consistently with my job. Oh, oh $100 oh, super chat. And Chris, oh Holy my heck. God, KH. Thank you. Thank you so much for oh. that, man. Super appreciate that. Very much is incredibly supportive and we're yeah. glad you could be here watching live and it reminds me of something like um somebody asked me this i got an email this morning saying, hey john was that you on such and such i do a little something just for fun because i know when when i was getting my channel going when we would get support it meant the world to me like seriously i mean it still does like k just sent support aj sent support al wrench i mean it still means the world to me that people want to support the channel yeah. that's amazing to me and i remember First getting started, especially how special it was to me as, as I was first getting started and had a smaller audience, didn't have a big audience yet. Like that would mean the world to me. So what I now do is when I'm on YouTube and in my side recommendations bar, if I see there's a live stream going on and it's movie related, I jump in randomly and I, I drop, I drop, uh, whatever you call it. I drop um, donations. Today I'm starting my new show. <laughs> John. <laughs> same, same right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I jump in there and I'll, I'll just find random ones. And it's funny, too, because every once in a while, 
it'll be for uh like a channel that uh i guess that, that doesn't like me then i go mm -hmm. and if i find out it's like one that doesn't like me i'll make the tip even bigger like i'll go <laughs> and i'll drop in like 200 or something like that oh, and then like i'll just I'll just tip bomb and then go. Like I'll just drop the bomb. So many and channels then go. now are gonna talk mad shit about you today and be like, oh <laughs> yeah, come find no. us. But no, but honestly, like so if I if I'm sitting there on my thing and, and there's a movie related live stream, mm -hmm. I'll just click on it if I have no idea who or what it is. I'll just click on it and go and drop in like ten or twenty bucks oh, or whatever. I love that. Just as I remember for me, that I mean that would make that made meant the world to me mm -hmm. when people would do that for me, right? So now I'm just trying to turn around and give it back a little yeah. bit. So KH, thank you so much, man, for stopping in here and being with us live and for so supporting nice. the show on that level. It's super appreciative, man. All right, what's next? From Al Renshaw, I liked Morbius, saw it twice. Got my ticket for everything, everywhere, all at once this weekend and so excited. Dude, I am so excited that you are going to go see that. That is my favorite movie of the year. And I love the Batman. Love the Batman. But everything, everywhere, all at once, to me, is the best movie of the year so far. Um, it's it's bonkers. It's crazy. It's funny. Um, I, I just cannot wait for you. I know it's only in limited release right now, but it's going wider in a week or so. And I cannot wait. Guys, get out and watch it as soon as you can, because I think you're just going to have a blast with it. I mean, not every movie's for everybody. Some of you won't like it, I'm sure. That's, that's just movies. But I, I think a lot of you are going to really like it, and I hope you guys have a good time when you do. All right, what's next? From Fry Minis, I voted for the Aura Hour for the new name. The Aura <laughs> Hour. So for those of you who don't know, I got on our community tab the other day. Say, hey, guys, just, you know, I'm thinking about changing the name of the show, and I am. I'm thinking about changing the name of the show. And I said, hey, if you guys got any recommendations? And there was, there was a lot of recommendations, uh, but one of them was the Aura Hour. <laughs> that was an interesting recommendation. All right, what's next? From Shrek. Thor trailer tonight with the NCAA final? I don't think so. I've heard nothing about that. That would be a great time to drop one, but I do not, I, I've not heard anything about it. All right, what's next? Uh, from Fifi again. So Sonic 2 last night. Oh, I'm so jealous. No spoilers, but I can't wait to hear your review, Chris. Only four more days. You are seeing it Less. in two days. I'm seeing it on Wednesday. And then I'm going to see it on Thursday. I'm so excited. I finally got my Regal Unlimited. So nice. I'm really excited about that because I can just walk there. So why wasn't I doing that? I was just throwing away money. But I'm, I'm really pumped about that movie. I'm I'm excited to see it myself. Mm -hmm. So I've got Tuesday I'm seeing Ambulance, mm -hmm. Wednesday I'm seeing Secrets of Dumbledore, and then Thursday I see Sonic Two. You're slammed. So it's it's but it's, yeah, it's fun, one. and we haven't I haven't had a week like this in a while. It's really mm -hmm. cool to have like a bunch of movies that I'm actually really curious to see all in a row. All right, what's next? Uh, from Lynn, happy Monday, can't be a crew. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Happy Monday to you. May you have a fantastic week. We appreciate that. All right, what's next? From Jim X Mafia. John, did you see uh, Kuthan in Doctor Strange 2? Uh, there, if you're talking about the newest trailer, that's or the newest 30 second spot, I mean, that that very well could be uh, Kuthan. That could be him. It's not 100% guarantee, but it did kind of look like that. All right, what's next? All right, from Jessica Quintel. Did you see the new Netflix movie, The Bubble? Your thoughts? Love your show. Happy birthday, Anne. I have not. And there's a couple of reasons. One, I didn't realize when it was opening. Mm -hmm. Two, I am a big fan of Judd Apatow. And when I'm a big fan of somebody... And then I hear bad things about their new movie. Mm. I get very scared of watching it because I, I don't, and I'm not hearing the greatest things about the bubble. Not to mention, I didn't think the trailers were great. We watched it. And at the end of the trailer, Logan turned to me and said, what is that movie about? Yeah. And I love Judd Apatow. Yeah. I mean, he did my number one all time favorite comedy ever. 40 year old virgin. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, I, and I love his wife. His wife is fantastic. Leslie Mann's so incredible. But I have not seen The Bubble yet. I'm scared to watch it because I, I, I've heard it's not that great. But I don't know. I might have to give in and watch it at one of these points, Jessica. I added it to my queue. I'll yeah. get there. Yeah. That is the soundest, sad, uh, the saddest <laughs> sounding. Oh, I'll add it to I my have queue. it in my queue. It's there. It's <laughs> All fine. right. What's next? From Alan Ling. Hey, John. A while ago, I said I would send that gift to Rob uh, of Rob to you. I emailed it to you over the weekend. Hope you and your crew can laugh at it. I have not seen it yet. Really? I mean, I probably got 
over the weekend is when I get the most. Like I probably get five or six hundred emails over the weekend. So I I have not seen it yet, but I will a, take a look a for GIF it. A GIF or a gift? A GIF. G I F. Oh, okay. Or a, a GIF, yeah. I guess, depending on oh, how you oh, want what, to what is it. it supposed to be? Of? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Rob doing something. Oh, I'm sure big, it's Rob doing something. Big dark lighter. <laughs> it's, it's Rob looking into camera saying, "I like redheads." That's All right. My assumption. So I will keep an eye open for that, Alan. All right. What's next? Big D Studio Entertainment again. What do you think will make more money, Top Gun or Doctor Strange? I'm thinking strange. I'm thinking because of bigger fan base. No. Oh, it's e it's going to easily be strange. Absolutely. Top Gun's going to do great. Now. I don't know this 100% for sure, but we are going to CinemaCon. The whole crew, we're all going to CinemaCon mm -hmm. at the end of April. I have a feeling there, I've already heard there are going to be three surprise screenings. I believe one of them is going to be Doctor Strange 2. I am a thousand percent convinced one of them will be Top Gun. I totally yeah. believe they're going to show us Top Gun there. That I makes don't sense. know. I don't know what the third one will be. The Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they're really coming it's together. Right. Like that. They did that so quickly. Um, See, so the true sign of a good film. I, but I mean, listen, I think Top Gun will do well, especially if it's anywhere near as good as it looks, because mm -hmm. they showed us like 13 minutes of it last right. year, and it looks amazing. I think that'll be a good full circle moment for them yeah. too, of like, and here it is for you guys. It'll work, and it'll mm -hmm. make money. But Doctor Strange is going to make more. Oh yeah. I mean, Doctor Strange is going to be the second billion dollar film in the pandemic era. So yeah, it'll definitely be Dr. Strange. Either of you guys disagree? No. All right. What's next? Uh, from uh, Hoser Maez. Happy early Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. I am wow. very excited about trying it out, man. I'm very excited what, to try it out. What's crazy is I haven't even heard any of this hype for it. So I'm Same. glad. Yeah, I, I know Matt's super excited for it. Okay. I love the shit out of Legos and Star Wars. Why did I not know about this? Yeah. All right, what's next? From Connie Zang. Oh, Connie, Connie who was, who, by the way, Connie. I met Connie this weekend. She came to the house this weekend. Oh, yeah. Her and, Anne, her and Anne have been getting together for, for months now. So mm -hmm. Anne invited her to come to her birthday, and I finally got a chance to meet Connie. Oh, that's awesome. And it was, was kind of cool, because one of the first things she asked me was, can you show me the studio? And I'm like, sure. And I brought her back in the studio. Oh, let her see the studio. Now she knows. That's now awesome. she knows now everything goes beyond behind the magic. All right. What does Connie have to say? Uh, this weekend was my first and maybe my last wrestling WrestleMania experience, but I'm glad I was at least in good company. Oh, yeah. So like the whole time the WrestleMania was on, like I'd walk by Connie. She's like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't get it. And then finally, like later in the evening, she was like, all right, I think I'm, I'm thinking about I'm WrestleMania it out. I think I'm going to check out now. I'm like, okay, Connie, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So she's a fan. Yeah, <laughs> she's a big fan. Big fan. All right, what's next? From Cincinnati's five-star barber. There he, there he is. There he is. One of two. John, I agree about the pilot of Heroes. There are so many great shows with great first episodes, but I've been meaning to tell you guys the longest to watch my favorite show, Snowfall. The pilot. Oh no! What about oh, the pilot? He never got part. Oh. The, pilot. the pilot must be amazing. The I'm hoping that's must what we're be Oh, uh, it gets cut off quickly, so he couldn't get his part two in. Cincinnati, just pop it in here for me, bud. Yeah, but if I, you're I, watching live, Cincinnati, throw it into the live chat there. I, but I, I know, I get what he's trying to say. He, he agrees with the first pilot being like the best pilot you've ever seen for a show. For he, heroes, he, yeah, it's the best. He pilot. might be saying that about Snowfall, is what I'm assuming. Yeah. And I've always heard good things about Snowfall. Mm -hmm. I know it's going into what its third or fourth season, so I mean, it's had some like longevity. That. Yeah, but. I, I've never seen it. I Have was very guys? interested in seeing it when the when the first season the promos are coming up, but I just didn't catch it, and then I I just lost. I just like skipped that way. Fell off. Yeah. There. I need to no, check it's it just, out. If you don't, if I don't see like a show like right away with everyone else, then it'll just mm -hmm. go on the back burner. Yeah. yeah if, if if you get if you fall too far behind, suddenly you're out of the conversation with everybody and. Yeah. Any, uh, anyway, but I, that's one I've heard a lot of good things about Cincinnati Five Star. So yeah. at some point, I'm going to get myself to sit down and watch it. I got a lot to catch up on, though. But yes, Heroes, still the best pilot for a show I've ever seen. So good. All right. What's next? Chuck the Mystery. Hey, John, actually getting to watch live today, and Rob isn't here. Not here. My favorite movie club so far is The Godfather. Still planning to do part two? And yeah, at some point we will do part two. We might wait until its 50th anniversary to do it. But yeah, that was a great one. I, you know, we've done eight movie clubs already. Oh, wow. I, I cannot believe it. It just feels like we just started. We've done eight. We're, our new one is tomorrow. Aliens, 
very excited about covering yeah, Aliens tour for Movie Club. You know, a uh, hilarious thing was after we did the Godfather Movie Club, I was uh, checking out the TV guide or whatever on screen. I don't know if any of you guys have like cable, but they had Godfather 2 and it stretched all the way past the time. And I was like, yeah, it's a long oh movie. my God. <laughs> so long movie. Good. All right, what's next? Oh, Cincinnati followed up about what Snowfall is. It's from John Singleton. Yep. And it's the story of how crack began in the 80s. So all like right. a feel good comedy or? A <laughs> feel good comedy. It's gonna be heavy. I'll have to check it out there sometime, <laughs> Cincinnati. All right, what's Ooh. next? Reamer Bulldog. Just watched Man of Steel for the first time and it was fantastic. Best mm. DCEU movie. I, I, Look, I say it all the time. I will probably say it forever. Zack Snyder's Man of Steel is the most underrated comic book film ever made. And it is a movie that gets better every time I watch it. And I'm glad. That, and a lot of I just will never understand why. I mean, I, I, I accept it. All film is subjective. So it's cool. Uh, going to be a lot of people who don't like it. But it's going to be one of those to me that I'll, I'll never get it. And that's mm -hmm. fine. But I'm so glad you had a chance to watch it, Remember, and I'm glad you liked it, too. I love this movie. You know what's great about Henry Cavill playing that role? is every time he speaks, it's very commanding. It's very authoritative or whatever. Yeah. And I love that about Superman because he shows no emotion, but at the same time, you listen. I don't know. All right. What's next? Uh, from Mickey. Having Daredevil being canon for about 12 hours and then not being is very emotionally <laughs> conflicting. It's such a great show to just forget about. Uh, forget about hopefully we'll have an answer soon as to why you know but here's the thing no one's going to agree with this but this is the truth it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter and i'll go back again a great example of this is grand Admiral thrawn it doesn't matter like the the heir to the empire series of books are probably the best star wars books ever written and everybody was like gotta make it canon gotta make it canon well they can't make it canon but it didn't matter. They brought Grand Admiral Thrawn over. They brought everything about him that was important over. And the other thing isn't canon, and that's fine. And it doesn't matter. I know nobody wants to hear this because it's not the cool thing to say. It does not matter if this is the exact same Daredevil from the series or not. Because even if it's not, they're going to bring over all the vast, vast majority of the things that we love about him. It won't matter if, well, this iteration of Matt Murdock didn't live in that apartment. He lived in a different apartment. Who the fuck cares? Nobody cares. And it won't matter. They'll bring over the things that matter. It's like, wait a minute. That was a different actress who played Karen. It, it won't matter. Wait a minute. It says that his first year of practicing law was this year, and now they're saying it was that year. It won't matter. All the things that we love about Daredevil, whether they say it's the exact same one from the Daredevil season as canon or not, will be there. And they're going to make him great, and he's going to feel very familiar, and it's going to feel like we're right back home again, just like they did with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah. And it won't matter. So I'm not going to be shocked if I found out that the Daredevil show is canon. I'm expecting that it's not, but either way, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I don't know. We'll we'll I'll, see. I'll we'll just see. be sad if we don't have the avocados at law. <laughs> the avocados at law. <laughs> That's, but they could carry that over they, too. I hope they do. They could carry that over without the original show being canon. That, for Halloween, I was Jessica Jones, logos Matt Murdock, and we dressed Gimli up as an avocado. Really? It was the best. Oh my God. I got to see pictures real of that. Cute. Pictures. And let's be happy for Charlie Cox. Yeah. He gets his pay yeah. in what he's good oh, at. You know? He's so great. Absolutely. All right, what's next? From Blackjack Hooligan, Shawshank and Green Mile are a perfect coupling. Oh, they are. I mean, Shawshank, to me, is a top 10, top five greatest film of all time. Mm -hmm. Sh Shawshank is a top five greatest film of all time. You know we're going to do that one for Movie Club at some point. And I, <laughs> while I don't think the Green Mile is in the same league, Green Mile is a wonderful movie. The great, late, great Michael Clark oh, Duncan, Tom so Hanks. So wonderful in that. A David Morse. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful Sam film. Sam Rockwell is terrifying in that film. And and that is a great doubleheader. That is a great doubleheader, Blackjack. All right, what's next? Jordan Ellis. The Batman is over 700 million yes, now. Yes, it is. That's a great run for an opening trilogy movie that was not very family-friendly. The sequel will easily pass 1 billion. Listen, it wasn't just the family-friendly nature of it. We've talked about this for months. It was the fact that 
the Batman character in the movies doesn't have the isn't on the greatest footing right now. There's a lot of people who have very mixed feelings about the Batman's interpretation and presentation in the movies the last couple of years. There's a lot of confusion surrounding the Batman. There's like three different Batman running around now with Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton and all this kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of confusion with this not being in the DCEU yet. It's called Batman. This and the fact that it's not a family friendly movie. It was borderline rated R. It doesn't appeal to families. And it had all these hurdles to overcross, and it's already crossed seven hundred million. It's the power of the bat and the power of curiosity. Yep, and I and you are absolutely right, Jordan. If a new Batman movie, if a new Robert Pattinson Batman movie came out next year, which it's not, but if it did, I, I will tell you right now, it's crossing a billion. Yeah, it would cross a billion, and and it was three hours long, which limited the number of screenings it had, and it still crossed seven hundred million. Huge, huge win for Warner Brothers in that one. All right, what's next? See Jerry Berth. Also, game day. Game two day. days for Sonic 2. Game day Yay. in two days. Two days. Two Wait. days. So now, yeah, but I am very... Uh, my, okay, my super high excitement has been tempered a little bit with some of the feedback I've heard yeah. from it. But I'm still excited. I'm still excited. I really like the first film a lot, and I'm very anxious to see this one. All right, what's next? Mr. Holdbrook, do you think that handsome hot character walked on the glass in Moonlight for uh, repentance of what he was going to do in the future? I don't know. Hmm. And it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> it's just that one opening, what it told me was he was devout. He was hardcore. Like, I, I don't even think it's about penance. I think he's just doing it because it toughens him. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or something, yeah, something like that. Like, I don't know what the reason is, but all I know is that that opening to Moon Knight, to me, immediately grabbed me by the throat for my attention. And mm -hmm. it kept me focused in there because that was a great opening. He had some tough skin yeah. underneath his feet. Very tough cow. He needs to get a pedicure is what, what I'm saying. A little bit of a petty. <laughs> if that's what you do to yourself, what are you going to do to your enemies? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to other people? Uh, I love that. All right, what's next? From Nicholas. Hi, I was wondering who was in charge of picking the songs like I, Zimbra and the magic number in No Way Home. Thanks for doing a show each day as well. Um, it everything comes down to the director. The director can go to other, can delegate that to other people, but at the end of the day, the director has to approve it. So um, yeah, like so they'll every movie will have a music supervisor, and so the director will tell the music supervisor kind of what they're looking for and what they want, and it's probably the music supervisor that brings certain elements. But at the end of the day, it's the director who picks them out. James Gunn is the perfect example for oh, that. Master at that. All too. the music he. he is in his films as chosen by him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he handpicks it himself personally. All right, what's next? From Brandon, I saw Morbius Friday and thought it was just okay. Although I feel like the movie is getting overhated and does not deserve the very low Rotten Tomatoes score. Well, but remember, Rotten Tomatoes is not saying this is a 16% movie. What they're saying is all the critics watched it and 16% of them liked it. Mm -hmm. It's not that the other 84% of it hated it they're just probably like me where it's like that's not the worst thing i've seen but it's not good yeah so like for instance if i i have not put up my review on rot i am a rotten tomatoes certified whatever but i very maybe like two or three a year i put up on there but mine would be one of the negative ones but i didn't hate it so it's it's always like the numbers are the numbers but sometimes the story is a little bit bigger than the numbers mm -hmm. right it's 16 doesn't mean everybody hated it it just means the vast majority of them at least didn't like it so yeah i i think it's getting a little bit more hate than it deserves as well but again i i didn't think I mean, it was good it's not a right. movie what's next uh from kevin joyce love pike's vibe in the trailer seems independent adventurous and devil may care yeah. but still principled which is what you want in a trek captain i'm telling you what i i haven't been this excited for a new star trek thing in a while mm -hmm. like i was i was very very pumped about a new picard but i think i may be more excited for this than yeah. than any other star trek i can think of in a long long time i mean this feels fun. really good yeah well you know john you know who has a pike hot toy <laughs> six scale six scale die one cast sixth. one six i'm gonna get it this in seven guy. months <laughs> <laughs> it's coming all right what's next from fredo just some support thank you thank so you, much fredo. uh aiden foley hey john you gotta get lego star wars the skywalker oh, everybody's saying five. this one of the funniest games in a while it's a parody while staying true to star wars i'm telling you, you know what i've been replaying lately i got because it's available on playstation now Mm -hmm. I got the old original LucasArts classic Day of the Tentacle remastered. 
And that right now is the funniest game I've ever played. Uh, mm, no, I take that back. Uh, fra uh, South Park Fractured But Whole <laughs> is probably the funniest game I've ever played. But close second to that is this. But hearing that a game is funny, that actually gets me really interested. So I am looking forward to trying it out, man. All right, what's next? Some support from Michael Hamilton and Charles Edmund Nelson. Thanks oh, so thank much, you, Charles. You Charles sent in like $20. Thank yeah. you, Charles. Appreciate that, That's guys. That's awesome. Uh, it was a high five, but I missed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. That's a great one. Uh, ben, Still ben Stiller is now one of my favorite storytellers. Can't believe how good Severance turned out to be. And it is deceptively low budget mm -hmm. and small scale. Yep. Is that the Apple TV? Yeah. TV? Yes. He, ben Stiller wrote that? Oh, I don't know if he wrote. He's I know directing he's directing it. it. Yeah. I saw the first episode, and I it was, it's very interesting. Oh, you got to keep going, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's like uh, it's such an interesting show. And I, who plays his next door neighbor again? What's it, Patricia? Oh, Patricia Arquette. Arquette. <gasps> She's so good in this show. She's incredible. And was that last episode the season finale? I don't think so. Okay, no. good because I screamed and was like, "This oh, that would be, be a end. bullshit way to end yeah. the season." I hate seasons that end that give you no sense of completion mm -hmm. to anything like that would be a, I'm, i'd be very upset you know what I, I will say this if that was the season finale mm -hmm. i wouldn't watch season two. Oh, it would, that, it would just piss me off so Got much my hackles up it would just make me give that up but mm -hmm. yes this show has been really good and honestly ben stiller has always been a very good director He's an incredible director yeah, yeah really really good director i love him all right what's next just ending with some support from dewan and marie so thanks so much you guys oh, thank you so much guys and guys that'll do it for today's episode of the John Campy Show, thank you so much for being here and making this show part of your day. Uh, I'll let you guys know that a little bit later today, we got a new episode of Mailbag going up, so keep your guys open for that. Also, we have a new episode of Designing Hollywood. We've got the award-winning uh, designer who designed all the costumes for Green Knight, who designed the new horror movie that's out in theaters, X. Uh, and that we've got wow. her coming up a little bit later, so keep your eyes open for that. And also, for those of you who are channel members, Keep your guys open because I'm going to be posting a community uh, board thing to only our channel members to let you guys know a little bit of an announcement about the channel. I'm going to be let, let you guys be the first ones to hear about it. So keep your eyes open for that as well. All right. I want to thank the people in the room with me right over here. We got Ray Orr. Ray, where can people find you online? That's Ray Orr with a zero. And right beside him, we got Chris Carr getting ready to see Sonic 2 in a couple of days. Yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at, at actor Chris Carr on Twitter or on Instagram, or you can go to eebstudios.com and sign up for my voice acting class. The next one starts April 11th. Uh, and by the way, I'm just going to do mention something here. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahmed in the live chat is writing, John, please talk about the flash test screening. 99% of the times, anytime you read about a test screening of an upcoming movie, it's mm -hmm. a total lie. Like 99% oh. of the time you hear there was a test screening of it, unless it's the director of the movie themselves talking about it, it's 100% bullshit. Why do they do Total that? Lie. I don't know, but they always do. People leak these stories. There was a test screening, and it's 99% of the time it's mm. a lie, so pay no attention. I, unless it's the director talking about it, in which case that'll be something we talk about on the show tomorrow. Uh, anyway, guys, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram or Twitter, simply at John Campia. Uh, don't forget to join us again tomorrow, guys. It'll be the three of us, as well as Robert Meyer Burnett, having, once he finishes his move up, he'll be back again tomorrow. And we look forward to seeing you guys. So that'll do it for us for now, guys. Thanks a lot for being here. My name's John Campia, and until next time, my friends, bye-bye.